correct. Jeff Hopkins. Next, we're going to go to Jeff Hopkins now. That so first target you looked at was the Stan Mule Deer. Now we're on the Elevation on the Havelina. 12 for Jeff. 12 for Jeff. He's right making the move gate. right off the bat. And, and then we're going to move to the Shibuya Impala. That big fella right there is not who I'd want chasing me. Mm-hmm. Confident. Okay, so that's going to score an eight. Next up. Scott Next up is going to be the Scott gold tip Russian ball. boar. And that's going to be Scott Price. And what a story Scott Price has. Yes. Coming back after eye surgery, cancer on his left eyelid, hard time seeing, just like difficult for us here eight in these conditions. And eight. <laughs> the light here is very flat. It's overcast. Every now and then we see a ray maybe mm -hmm. poke through. Yeah. We're watching the shoot off in the booth on a big screen TV here, and it's hard to see where these arrows are landing. So, we're well, all right, called, an upper. called an upper. Good in. shot for Harold there. So now what happens is the archers are going to move to the next target. So for instance, you have Richard Owens, your number one qualifier, who starts off at the stand mule deer. He's going to rotate over to that second target, which is the elevation javelina, and the entire crew shifts. So for Harold Kogar, who started on the bow doodle grazing doe, he's going to move to our first target, which is the stand mule deer. Now, they did have that 10 minutes of, uh, you know, time to judge distance. And so how do they do it? They're going to write it down on a piece of paper yep. or is it just memory? <laughs> they typically, and what, what I would do is I would write down what target I'm starting on. If I was starting on the Shibuya Impala, which is target number three, I'd write that one down first. I would just go down to the gold tip, Russian boar, et cetera, et cetera. And I'd mm -hmm. fill out my numbers, write my number to the side. I may put a plus or minus out there, depending on how my first one goes. I may want to make an adjustment. Did I hit low? Did I hit high? Uh, you know, you got to get calibrated for different conditions because this is totally different than where we qualified at. And there the scores have changed. You can see that Owens now with a four-point lead over Hopkins, upper left-hand part of your screen. We're looking at Harold Kogar, who is – A.K.A. Digger. A.K.A. Digger. He yeah. moved himself into third place, and if he called that upper – from our vantage point, it's hard for us to see the cone. It looks like he did call the upper. So there's a cone that the archers can move from the back of the shooting box to the front of the shooting box. From so what I've seen so far, he has no intention of finishing in fifth. He came in in fifth, no intention of finishing there. Back to back 12s for him. And we can't tell you here in the senior pro category, which is a judging distance category, exactly what the length of the course is. But if you stick around, our next category is going to be senior known pro, followed by another couple of known pro categories. And we can tell you exactly the distance these targets are set at. Ooh. Mm -mm. Yeah. He didn't like that. That was definitely a, a bobble for Hopkins. Gave back what he gained there on that first target, unfortunately. Like to have a dollar for every arrow he shot in his life. <laughs> you you would be right. extremely rich. Yeah, I'd, I'd be a wealthy man. Twelve for David Pyle. David Pyle with a twelve. So he shot upper. that upper. Yeah, mm -hmm. caught that upper. Tell us when we talk about uppers, Darren. What are we talking about? Yeah, there's two twelves in play. The low twelve, which you can see, uh, I don't know, depending on which way the animal's facing. Five o'clock, seven o'clock. It's always in play. You don't have to call it. But you do so have the option to shoot that high ring, and if it is the upper 12. If you do shoot it, you have to call it. If you accidentally hit it and don't call it, it scores as a 10. And vice versa, if you call the upper and accidentally hit the lower, it scores as a 10. It's now out of play. And, of course, keep in mind the 14 is in play as well. So if someone wants to get really gutsy, and we definitely expect to see that in some of the matches coming up in the women's known pro category, which will be our third match of the day. Paige Pierce is on a seven-run win streak, and she comes in in fourth place. So the chances that Paige Pierce is going to be gunning for 14s, I think, is pretty high. Yeah, yeah. If she wants to keep that streak going, she's, what, 10 points behind the leader, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, that's two 14 and a 12. Is it common? Yeah, it can happen. Is it likely? Eh, very likely with her, but this win could be a little bit of a factor there. So now our fifth place archer coming in, Harold Kogar, is now in third place at a 421 so Owens continues to lead 428 then Hopkins at a 22 Kogar at a 21 and then we have Pilot at 19 and Price at 415. 
Good look at Richard Owen there. He survived the rain in big fashion yesterday. He shot eight up in the torrential downpour, which was a really, really solid round. And he gets a nice solid 10 ring on that one. And you know, for us here at Competition Archery Media, Darren, normally after our first day of competition, we interview the leaders of each class and it was so much rain that it really, it had an effect on our cameras oh, yeah. and we just didn't have the resources to do it. Our stuff started to break down. It was bad. I mean, it just, everything we had was soaked. The court scorecards were a mess. It's <laughs> just, oh, it's the worst conditions you can have. All right, so. Was that upper called? Yeah, so that's the Stan Mule Deer and it was called. 12 points. Good shot, Scott. Why am I still cutting? Scott Price, what an absolute legend, what a story. He Very talks cool about Jeff Hopkins being one of his best friends and, and they have never yeah. shot together in a shoot down before. <laughs> so Price is just happy to be here. Richard Owens still enjoying a six point lead. Good look at it, Richard again. He's shooting those long back bars, Good such a, Richard. not normal, unorthodox so maybe, but you see a few more of those sets out there now. Good 10 for him on that long Impala. And for Jeff so Hopkins. 10. On the Russian boar. Owen's coming in steady so far. He's got 8, 10, 10. So he's given two points back mm -hmm. to the field in terms of that par score. But right now, you got to look at Kogar and how aggressive. Is that Hopkins That's again well there? Yeah. Oh, lady, that guy. Uh, on that gold. Is that that gold tip Russian boar for Hopkins? Another 12. So he gets to, <laughs> gives it up, he gives it he's back, and now gets another he's two. He's not going to go away. I <laughs> promise you he's not. Yeah, if there's anybody who knows how to play this game. And this is the thing. There's one thing if you can range find, and you can just set your marks. And mm -hmm. But in this game, you've got to know when to take the risks, right? Yeah. I shot right next to Jeff again, and I've said it before on the broadcast, if you've listened, that Jeff hits the stuff that nobody else does. And he did today. I mean, he stepped up to a deer you know, 50 yard deer, probably 12. You know, he goes over to a Wolverine that's close to 50, if not 50, 12. You're, you can 12 those, but you're not supposed to. And he always <laughs> yeah. does. Yeah, yeah. So that's why you can never count him out because he hits the stuff most people don't. All right, so of our five regulation targets, we're now on target number four and it moves that quickly. But Darren, there is the possibility of a last chance, mm -hmm. last chance archery, last chance arrow, and how do we get that and who's gonna shoot that? We're gonna shoot five regulation arrows here, and then anybody within 10 points of the leader will be eligible to shoot the sixth and final last chance, last chance arrow. So anything can happen. If you're within four points of the leader and you get one more chance, you got just let it all hang out there and go for that 14, so. All right, so right side of the field, Jeff Hopkins is already at full draw, and he's getting after it because the one-minute clock has started. As we wait for these two that are on our stand mule deer and the elevation javelina. That's a good look there on that split screen. Mm -hmm. David Piles at full draw, ready to go on the muley. I think some of that right stuff there's got to be win for him. It's got to be. Scott went for the 14. It looked like he did. He just missed right, it. Up, David Pyle, at 427. <laughs> That's such a small ring to shoot at, too. It's like no matter how much you look through the binos or what we call glass in it, sometimes it just doesn't hit. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Well, being 11 points behind the leader, two targets to go, I really don't blame him. He's tied for fourth, tied for fifth. Mm -hmm. No place to go but up. You know, you can't finish worse than fifth. So good job, Scott. So close. It's going to be an eight for him. And it was funny, too, Darren, because I asked Scott Price. He said, oh, look, I'm just thankful being here after all the health issues I've had. Mm -hmm. And I said, really? If you find yourself in third or close to a podium, you're not going to go for it? He's like, well, <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Competitive spirit never never goes away. And, and you know, for, for Price, he thinks he's probably the third oldest shooter in the field. Oh, wow. 64 years okay. old. Okay. Yeah. I guess I didn't realize that. I've known these guys for so long, it's hard to imagine that they can be in their mid-60s now. That would mean you are in your, we're not talking about yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Celebrating the 24th anniversary of my 29th birthday. <laughs> Do that math. Yeah. 
Senior Pro, our fourth arrow has been shot as we are wrapping up our scoring Jeff here. Hopkins, Still four points between Richard and Jeff. Bonus rings. If Jeff can close the gap a little bit more by hitting a 12 on the and next one, that's a close arrow right there. That's a clean cut 12 though. That's really solid lines for a foam target right there. Yeah, it is. So it looks to us pretty clear to me anyway that that wouldn't necessarily be it. It's got to contact that line at some point, even if it pulls it in there. We actually had an arrow call in the range today. When I looked at it from the top, I said, there's no way that arrow can be in. But when I looked at it from the bottom to shine the light on, I was like, there's no way I can call that arrow out. Mm -hmm. So we're getting one view right here. Mm -hmm. We're looking at a flat screen straight on. Uh, they, it, it was just out, but sometimes they look out and they can be still touching or rolling that line. So it's it's hard to go by off of one view. If I would have just had one look at that arrow today, I definitely would have called it out. But a second look and there was no way you could call it out. All right, so now there's got to be some strategy that's going to play in for, I think, for Hopkins right there. And that's going to be, you're actually four points back as we reset the scores, 448 to 444. Hopkins has more bonus rings than Owens does, mm -hmm. who we're looking at here in the Hoyt jersey. And so for Jeff Hopkins, he's got to really think about his strategy on, is it time to go for a 14? And I can tell you that the Stan Mule Deer is not the closest target that we have on the range. There's a good look at Jeff right there. He really needs a twi Ooh, that fired quick and he went right underneath of it. That eight will be detrimental depending on what Richard does. Oh, the wind just picked up as yeah. well. You can see it just over the shoulder of Scott Price. Good, good solid, yeah, Scott. solid 10. And middle. 10, yeah, so Richard's gonna take a six point lead into right. the final arrow. Jeff Hopkins coming in second place. All right, so we're going to go to Jeff Hopkins, who is on that stand mule deer. Good look over the shoulder of David Powell. Just off eight. He Jeff. shot a 10. Mm -hmm. So we know that Hopkins is in for an eight. He probably needed one more yard on his site right there. And we're He's actually experiencing just a massive gust of wind. And this is what we're, up, so good timing in terms Only of the archers weren't at full draw where it's scoring right now. Mm -hmm. But this is what some He's archers can be here. in for. And this is where that one minute to shoot yeah. your arrow here in, in ASA could be really beneficial to some archers. Yeah, because if you're a full draw and that wind gust comes in, starts moving you all over the target, your mind starts going, oh crap, mm -hmm. do I have enough time? Should I, should I let down? That's a good 10 there by Scott Price. For Scott. Uh, especially after the length of that hold. Let's see how this all shakes out with the math, but I know Richard and Jeff will shoot the sixth arrow. Harold Kogar currently at 441 and still within And then up points. to Digger, huh? Kogar has been making some moves since he got up here in fifth place. Ball. He's actually sitting in third. Ten for and that's 10 for him. A little too low. Going for it though, calling <laughs> that upper. If you're just joining us, this is our second round of the 2024 Delta McKenzie ASA Pro Am Tour here. It's the Black Eagle Darton Pro Am. Raducci Creek for the Pro Pressure Point Shoot Down. We've gone through our five regulation arrows in Senior Pro category. And now we're going to have to determine who is within 10 points of the leader as we go to our last chance archery, last chance arrow. In fourth place is Scott Price, and in fifth place Scott is David Price. Pyle. In Let's give him a round of applause. Fourth place, David Pyle in fifth place. I think those two archers are going to be out of it. So Richard Scott Owens with a commanding Hopkins lead, and I, I think it's going to be just Jeff Hopkins and Richard Owens. And Harold Kogar. And Harold Kogar, that's yep. right. Yep, Harold's sorry, Harold. Yep, he had moved up to third, yep. Richard's in a good spot, having a six-point lead with just the 14 ring in play, meaning if Richard shoots a 10 and somebody shoots a 14, they can't catch him. So he's in a really good spot. Six points six points with one arrow to go, I would feel pretty good about myself right now. Yeah, you're in the driver's seat, right? Yes. All you really gotta do is just think center. You get a shoot last, so if those guys do hit a ring, all you have to do is hit that big 10 ring, which when you have to hit a 10, it's not that super easy, but as many arrows as these guys shooting as comfortable as are shooting these they shooting at these rings uh, hitting a 10 shouldn't be too bad unless Scott really backs them up 
All right, so he's gonna. They're actually gonna be shooting the hyena. That's gonna be the last chance of archery, isn't that the hyena? Yep, it is. All right, so from your experience, Darren Christianberry, size of the scoring rings because they do vary slightly. Yeah, I think the ten rings right at five inches. Mm -hmm. I think it's right at five inches, but the twelve rings are just not much bigger than a, a U.S. fifty cent piece or a half dollar. Um, I don't know the exact measurement of it, but I know if you miss it by a yard, you might clip the line if it's around 40 yards. But basically, if I was going to say yardage here, uh, every every yard you're off is about an inch on the target. So you need to be within one yard to ensure you're going to hit these bonus rings. All right, so as they're setting the targets, there's two things. Number one, they're picking a random spot on the field of play to set this target up. Additionally, Scott, who's in charge of all this stuff for ASA, is really, he puts the archers at a random place as well on the range. So they're not shooting from the shooting boxes that they were. So now they're given an opportunity to judge yardage. Mm -hmm. Now this is very important though, because you know, as part of the integrity of the sport, as we see Jeff Hopkins changing his sight there, can anybody like look at his sight or is it no. Do you, you have to block like the yardages? I, I think it's actually a written rule. I don't know if it's ASA or IBO, but there is a written rule where you have to have a yardage. You have to have your sight tape covered. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, to be, if you were standing over someone's shoulder looking at them set their sight, that's, uh, I would call that unsportsmanlike conduct. So yeah, 100%. You're not supposed to do that. Or lean to somebody and say, Darren, what'd you get? Yeah. <laughs> what yeah. Yardage? Hey, that's well, how far you think this is? You'll yeah, hear that. That's highly yeah, frowned upon. That, yeah. <laughs> in the, in the uh, known categories where you have a range finder, you'll hear that often. Yeah. Hey, what'd you get? I'm just curious what you get, you know? Just trying to check with your group to see. But, uh, you know, listen, in the rain, you, you can see that umbrellas are used here even in the wind, but in the rain, umbrellas were used to try to protect some equipment. I mean, yeah. you know, th it, it helps to be a nice person. <laughs> Yeah. In a good group that's friendly, uh, so you definitely get umbrellas because it was it was something else yesterday. Yeah, you need uh, you need help when there's days like days like yesterday. You have to have assistance out there because if not, you're All miserable. Right, start your one minute now. All right, so Harold Colgar has got a 4.51 guaranteed third place. It's the last chance archery, last chance arrow. Chances are Kogar's just going for the 14. You got yeah, nothing to lose this at this is, point. This is 14 or nothing right here. This is a good target to shoot too. You can see those black dots all around those rings. Great references at full draw. Very easy to aim at this target. He can probably see. I don't know what the distance is because I can't see the target, but he can probably see that 14 ring through his scope when he gets to full draw, if I had to guess. Mm -hmm. He's waiting on that breeze to settle down. So much so, unfortunately, our signage for the last chance archery, last chance arrow had to be moved because they don't want it to start blowing around. All right, so he's got one minute here. If I'm him, if I'm Kogar, I'm just chilling. I'm going to see if this yeah. wind kind of calms down for a moment. It's actually steady to picking up, so he's <sighs> he's eventually going to have to come to full draw and then either aim left or bubble over a little bit. He's going to have to do something to aim left of that ring to hit it. And that's exactly what you were talking about, at least from our camera view. Mm -hmm. If you look on the screen, there's a lot of definition. Ooh, and you can see that there's sun just yeah. poked right through it and just highlighted it. Yeah, he's, he's just turning his light back on. So he's got to be down to like 20-some seconds now. Got to be. All right, well, it is what it is. got to let it fly. Keith's holding his umbrella, but someone needs to have his clock, too, to make sure he fires it within that one minute. 14 or nothing. It's that upper left-hand smallest ring. Keep pulling. Keep pulling, bud. There you go. Hmm. Well he done, Harold. Well done. <laughs> I don't know if Mike's making fun of him. <laughs> he must have went at the 12. Yeah, I guess he went for that 12, just eight dropped a little bit low, and he was able to catch the 8 Next line. Up, there is that line that defines the 8 ring, and if he was outside of that, it would have been a 5. So you can see the 14 ring in the upper left-hand corner. You, if you follow that outer line that's just on the top of that, goes all the way around, that's that 8 ring. Yeah. The hardest thing, I think, for a lot of people that are new to 3D archery is, is seeing the core. Mm -hmm. The core line the itself, because those are replaceable cores. Yeah. Yeah. They don't really count, so right. you got to look at the scoring rings. All right, here goes Hopkins, who's six points back. You know, I got to thinking there, Harold may have been shooting at that 12 because he knows how aggressive Jeff is. If Jeff shoots a five here, Harold gets second place. Ooh, 
And that hit down. One of the things to note is Hopkins let that fly, and he's going to get an eight on that one. He shoots a pinky release, yep. which is really an interesting release where he's actually pulling through the shot and allowing his pinky to set that release off. And it, it looked like, at least for this competition, that might have been just a little too hot. You can see the release. His thumb is on a barrel, but it's just, it's a, that's just holding the release. Yeah, it almost looked like it surprised him really bad. Mm -hmm. I think Richard just needs five points to win this thing. If he hits this animal, he's going to win this tournament. So if you're ready. Because Jeff moves to 460 with that eight. Yep. Richard needs two points. So if he hits this animal anywhere, he wins this tournament. For Richard Owens, coming in here with an eight-point lead, and he's able to fight off his competition. And now with the possibility of taking home the title. The Rose Hill, Virginia native president pulls back. It's foam. <laughs> and a nice center 10. And that's your champ, Black Eagle, Dart and Pro Am in our senior pro category. Second place. And family members in attendance, Joe Pitt and Tony Pazza, yep. according to him. Yep. His buddies. That's right. He won K50 way back in the day. Second in 2021 in the Senior Pro-Am and third in 2023. He now comes out and wins it all. What a day for Richard Owens. There's Tony Pazza. He's new to this winning stuff. We'll get him over <laughs> to get on the headset and we can have a conversation with him. In tricky conditions and with other archers getting after that 12 ring. It gets a nice win for Hoyt as well. Well, Richard. You wanted us to chat with you, and here you are. Congratulations. What an outstanding win for you. How are you feeling? I just I can't believe it. <laughs> I want to thank the Lord first for helping me this weekend. It's been a long time coming. I've shot this since 2003 and uh, put a lot of time in it. haven't been shooting great at home, and I got here, and the rain and stuff was just terrible. But I, I don't know. I shot good in it, and uh, I don't know. The Lord just wanted me to win it, I guess. Richard, a big guy named Jeff Hopkins told me years ago that if you want to win out here, you've got to catch some breaks. Yep. And with the weather yesterday, pretty much perfect shooting conditions today, I would think you had to catch some breaks along the way. Yeah, I, I started, I normally shoot all uppers, and uh, I figured out real fast after about five targets in the rain that I was losing yardage and I was shooting low. So I just started calling lowers and started hitting them and shooting big numbers and still hitting the lowers. So... If I hadn't have done that, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have made it. Well, buddy, congratulations. A well-deserved win. We'll, we'll see you at the next one. All right, thanks. All mm -hmm. right, so there's your champion in the senior pro category. Richard Owens takes home the number one plate. More archery coming at you from the Black Eagle Darton Pro-Am right here in Ooch Creek. Stay with us. Sub four pounds, eight feet per second faster. Our goal wasn't just light and fast. It was how light and how fast. Yeah, buddy. The X-10 is the most successful arrow in competitive archery history, accounting for far more medals than any other individual piece of sporting equipment in Olympic history. 
Easton introduces the latest innovation to the X10 lineup, the 4mm Parallel Pro. Parallel Pro offers legendary X10 precision for all forms of archery. Elevate your precision. Your journey to the podium begins with Easton X10. I have to shoot the best or there's just no point in doing it. I'm blown away at just how easy each arrow tunes right out of the box. Ultra Arrows, the pinnacle of precision and performance. Sub four pounds, eight feet per second faster. Our goal wasn't just light and fast. It was how light and how fast. It's a 2024 Delta McKenzie ASA Pro-Am Tour in our second round of the season, the Black Eagle Darton Pro-Am. I'm Greg White sitting alongside Darren Christian Berry. We're ready for the Pro Pressure Point shoot down here at Uchi Creek in Russell County, Alabama. Senior known pro is on deck, which means it's time for P.J. Riley to introduce the archers to the field of play. All right, here we go. Senior known pro. Our fifth place qualifier with a score of 416 from Wapanuka, Oklahoma, shooting for Darton, Chad Hilburn. And our fourth place qualifier with a score of 418 from Pocatello, Idaho, shooting for Hoyt, Rio Wild. Our third place qualifier with a score of 422 from Uniondale, Indiana, shooting for elite Mike Hobart Sr. And our second place qualifier with a score of 426 and 15 bonus rings from Provo, Utah, shooting for Matthews, Tim Gillingham. Our number one qualifier with a score of 426 and 20 bonus rings from Columbiana, Ohio, shooting for Matthews, Randy Morocco. What a field of archers we have here for our senior known pro category. And one of the things that we can tell you is how far the targets are away. However, before we do that, let's talk a little bit about uh, some of the scores we've had. Randy Morocco comes in tied with, with Tim Gillingham, but the difference is, of course, those bonus rings, which are the 12. Darren. Randy hit a bunch. A bunch. <laughs> I mean, to, to shoot 20 bonus rings, that's 40 up, you know. So he only finished at 26 up. So he made 14 points worth of mistakes. Now, was that two fives and two eights, or was that seven eights? I don't know what that is. But to hit 20 bonus rings is quite a feat out there, especially with the weather that we had yesterday. So I know he blistered it today. I don't know. I know he shot a big score. I don't know exactly what it was. So the majority of his round was done today, but still, Half the bonus strings, 26 up. He's in a good position. Okay. So we're looking at Tim Gillingham, of course, who comes in tied on score and down five bonus rings to Randy Morocco. All right, we'll it is minute. windy. Now. Yeah. It, it, unusual. Normally we're nestled in the woods and all this kind of stuff, but this is Tim Gillingham weather. Yeah. For and, sure. And Rio wild weather. Rio's a... He's shot FIDA and all this outdoor stuff for years, so he knows how to read wind. Now, can he read wind on 3D targets? We're about to find out. Killingham shooting that new Matthews title 40, a bow that is 
unobtainium at this point. It's a unicorn, the only one in existence as we know it. Should be available. There's your leader. It's quite windy. It is. It is definitely yeah, blowing see around. right there. I mean, Randy, he hit 20 of those little circles and missed the whole 10 ring, and I believe that's solely because of the wind blowing from left to right. All right, so our first target is the stand mule deer, and that is a target that's 45 yards downrange. Then we're going to move to our elevation javelina. Now, this little javelina is 37 yards downrange, but it is a small target, yes, Darren. Little. It is little. It's a nasty little target at long distance, so 37 is not too bad right there, but when they set that booger at 50 in the woods, it's tough. Good look at Mike Holbert right there. Solid 10. So then the third target we have on the range is the Impala. Okay, so the Sheboygan Impala, that is 49.9 yards away. That is a tenth <laughs> of a yard shy of our maximum distance here in ASA Pro-Am competition. We're just going to round that one up to 50. I think so. Yeah, we're just going to round that up to 50. This is the Russian boar. It's the gold tip Real. Russian boar, and that sits 34 yards away from Ten. the shooting line. 10 for Rio. That's Rio Wild in with a middle 10. And then we go to the grazing doe. Is that what you call it, the grazing yeah. doe? Yeah, feeding doe, grazing doe, I think that'd work. 43 and a half yards downrange. Now, you know, even in this category where you have known pro, known distance, you can, you know, grab your range finder and you're going to click it. I mean, everybody's going to do that. I think really got to judge this field still with the with the wind mm -hmm. and I think it's probably a good arrow just to put in a 10 at least in the first one so then what happens is is that each of the archers is going to rotate over one target so for instance our fifth place qualifier Chad Hilburn he was rotating from our our bow doodle grazing doe all the way to the stand mule deer which is our first target and then Randy Morocco moves from the stand mule deer to the elevation javelina. Mm -hmm. and that's the way it works. Yeah, they'll shoot these five targets that we've mentioned in order. They'll rotate through, and then anyone within 10 points of the leader after these five regulation targets will get to shoot the last chance archery, last chance arrow. They'll get one more shot and a sixth and final arrow to try to win this tournament. There's Rio Wild just coming back in the United States after being coached for the Korean national compound team for 2023. Oh. 14 gold medals to his credit in world archery competition. And Rio called for an upper. Yeah, I think he smoked it. And from our vantage point, by the way, it is just pure comedy because I think Rio is probably the uh, in stature is probably one of the is the shortest one and he's got <laughs> Steve Anderson who is about as tall as Tim Billingham holding his umbrella for him. I'm not really sure Steve even needs an umbrella he, to shield him from the wind. Yeah, he did that as a planned wind blocker, I'm sure. <laughs> he sure did. First up, Chad Hilburn. First up, Chad oh, Hilburn. Golly, he goes for the 14, 14 on the stand mule deer. Make a big move back into the hunt. And that's a big bonus ring right there. Oof. That is as close as you I like think it. He's just off. Now he is. He's going to be an eight. I like the aggressiveness, though. When you're coming Good. in here in fifth yes. place, you got to go run. for it. And again, that's that's also that's a 45-yard poke down there. Now to the elevation javelina. That's going to be Randy Morocco, your leader, and he's going to come in with a ten. Ten is good on that little guy, no matter what. Mm -hmm. Our leader, Tim Gillingham, up by two points. Tim Gillingham is up by two points. He's your leader, and he's on the Shoboya Impala. Ten. Ten for Tim. We can see that one pretty clear for Gillingham. That's a ten. I would be shocked if Tim made it through these six arrows without bonus rings. I would be shocked. He's a different kind of aggressive out there, so if, he'll shoot at any 14. It doesn't matter to him. If he can see it, he can hit it. And that is the gold tip Russian boar. And that's going to be wide for eight. Eight for Mike. Now we're going to Rio Wild. Who, by the way, was the only archer I saw that brought his binos up. And he gets a 12 <laughs> for the bonus ring for Rio. Because I think Rio's still learning where to shoot. This is only his fourth uh, ASA competition. Yeah, he broke the ice. He's at the first 12 of the bunch out there right now. Some of the best known pro shooters in the world. And that was, a, that was, of course, on the Bow Doodle Grazing Doe. That's 43 and a half yards. Now Rio's going to move to the Stan Mule Deer. 
That's 45 yards, so only an extra yard and a half, building the confidence on the long ones. Rio made his career, Darren, shooting 50 meters, which is what, 54.7, yeah. 54.8 yards? Just shy of 55 yards, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's shot all over the world on that 50-meter stuff, and he's a, what, two- or three-time Vegas champion? Yeah, three-time. Yeah, yeah, so, no, he's got, a, he's got quite the resume. He's been quite the flatlander, but he's gonna out now a three. He can't say he's not a 3D shooter now. He's a 3D shooter too, so I like it. That's right. <laughs> and there, there's the look at Steve Anderson on the left in Rio Wild. You can see the size difference there. Mm -hmm. It's a perfect guy to have, especially when you're the first in line because it feels like the wind's coming from Steve Anderson's back. Yeah, yeah, it's blowing hard from the shooter's left, straight left to right. So when you see these right-handed arrows, I'm a firm believer that the wind is moving them. So it looks like Rio's called for the upper. No, and again, like Case Randy in point. Morocco. Case in point right there. Mm -hmm. That's wind. Yeah. So that would be, from our vantage point, looks like a rate f an eight for Rio Wild. You can see that he had tied himself for third place. So it's Gillingham still up by two before we score Real this wild. round of arrows. Eight for Rio on the mule deer. So for Wild, he gave that back. So we kind of look at that. 12 to 8 is kind of too mm -hmm. too far, right? Like, yeah. You know, just getting that 20. Ooh. I'm not sure if that's a straight right or straight low of that 14. I'm assuming it's low of the 14. So it was an 8 for Chad, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. Yep. Good look at Randy. I think he's shooting. A, is that a phase 4? Is he shooting last year's hunting bow from Matthews maybe? Yeah, I believe you're right. Must have been a 10 for Randy on that. Yep, they pulled the 10 out of the Impala for Randy. Now we're at Tim. I'm going for, I think he's on the gold tip Russian boar. Mm -hmm. 10, for Tim. 10 for Tim. Don't you let me down, Gillingham. I said you'd make <laughs> it through here with a bonus ring. Don't yeah. you let me down. So this is going to be Holbert. On the bow doodle grazing doe, and that's a 10. So, in terms of the battle for third, he's now going to pull away from Rio by a couple right, points. Yeah, it's crazy how fast this goes. We've already shot three of the five. They're getting ready to shoot their fourth arrow already. So, if it seems like it's going fast from our seat and on the television, it's definitely going fast out there for these guys. So, if you're going to make a move, you're running out of time. Senior no pro. Fourth arrow getting ready to be shot here at our second round of the 2024 Delta McKenzie ASA Pro-Am Tour. This is the Black Eagle Darton Pro-Am. It's a pro pressure point shoot down Raruchi Creek in front of a, a large crowd that has mm -hmm. come out when it's actually starting to dry out a smidge. It was brutal yesterday with rain and this morning it was muddy though. The rain held off for most of the shooters. Very flat lighting in the qualification area. Now we're here at the finals venue and the one minute clock to sh shoot your arrow just began. You can see pretty bright sunlight out there mm -hmm. now. We've not seen a lot of that. Mm -mm. What's that gonna do to the, the way you're looking through your peep sight and your scope? It can definitely change the light as you're, as you're perceiving it through there, but it also changes and puts different shadows and brightness on the target, so it can also make it harder to aim on some of these animals. The middle, looks like Gillingham on that bow doodle grazing doe going for a 12 and just missed it. Good look at Holbert Sr. and he hit right as well. Everybody that's shooting that mule deer over close to the river is hitting right. Uh -huh. Eight for Holbert. Okay. Now we go to Rio Wild, who's on that elevation javelina. Eight for Rio. He hit right as well. That's a missed opportunity for Rio because he could have gotten those points back on Hulbert. Mm -hmm. So Tim's still in the lead, correct? Yeah, correct. Yeah, so. Because really, Morocco just gave him those two points at the beginning. Mm -hmm. So that's been the difference. It's been all tens. Ten for Chad on the Shibuya Impala. So let's see what Randy and Tim did here. Did he call up her? 
Andy Morocco. It looked like I he did. He did. Uh oh. Okay. So now if Gillingham's isn't a 12 and it's a 10, they're back tied. They're back tied, and Morocco would take the lead on bonus rings. Oof. They're looking hard. That is an upper call, too. It is. Man, that's close. Ooh, man. And I'm sure Tim's shooting triple X's on the gold tip. That's a big old fat arrow. That's close. That is probably one of the closest I've ever seen. Because it's got the target broke there mm -hmm. at the 8 o'clock. Yeah, I, I, yeah I thought it was a 12. Wow. He did get it. Wow. That's by .01 millimeters. <laughs> yeah. All right, so that should still have Gillingham with a two-point advantage over Randy Morocco. So 466 for Randy Morocco after that 12. So you see it there, Gillingham 468, Morocco 466. Holbert still in third place at a 58. Mm -hmm. Rio Wild still in fourth. So let's take a look at Randy Morocco and see what he's going to do. So Morocco is on the Bow Doodle Grazing Doe. That's 43 and a half yards away. You got to add yourself. We got to add to the equation at this point the wind, and all of a sudden now we got to add the sun. Yeah. And Darren, for Randy Morocco, we were talking before this match started, and he said he's lost so much off of his sight tape that he goes to his number and then has to add 28 clicks. For why? I don't know. That's that's what his process is because he lost some speed. This. I don't know that, you know, from maybe where he set his sight tape to here is hmm. more humid. Obviously, he the rain slowed everything down. He must down. not have changed his indicator needle then. He's just at it doing the math. Yeah, he is. Well, if he called upper, he did it looks call like upper. he got it. Ten. Tim is just a 10, so they're going to go into the final arrow tied. This is going to be interesting. There's First Tim. I don't think you like the shot either. No, he wasn't happy about where it landed. But look, here's the thing. He wasn't happy where it landed on the stand yeah. mule deer, but everybody's been missing that right. Look how many, yeah. there were three arrows you could see in the eight ring yeah. that were all right next to each other on that stand mule deer. So I know Tim's disappointed, I understand that, but really if you look at the he actually, shooters that came before him, he got away with it. He actually one. got two points on the whole field right there because mm -hmm. everybody else shot an eight. Yeah, agreed. 12 for, 12 for one. Eight. Well, that's gonna ensure third place for him, I would think. Mm -hmm. Real Wild needs a 12 to stay within points. I'm not sure he got it. Mm. No. That no. One, that one again went right for him. He's in the middle, so that's the Shibuya Impala. But look, for your fourth time at ASA competition, coming back after a year off of shooting, not bad for the yeah, GOAT. Just making the shoot off is, is a feat. Mm -hmm. You know, and then you got to, like we mentioned earlier, you got to catch some breaks, you know, which, which target do you lead? You know, how hard's the wind blowing when you're shooting the 50 yarders? <laughs> Let me ask you, Darren, though, if you're real wild and your boss decides to hold your umbrella for you, is that putting a little extra pressure on it? Nah. Steve Anderson. Nah, well, <laughs> it shouldn't, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I know you've done it for a couple shooters, yep. your shooters over the years. Yeah. That's a good arrow right there, Randy well, Morocco. That's a good arrow. All right, gentlemen, right now we're sitting with our leaders. They'll tally it up, but I'm pretty sure we're tied going into the sixth there. Yeah, 78 for Morocco. It's so bonus ring is going to break the tie, which is going to be Randy. Randy's going to get a shoot last. So yeah. Tim can force the issue, but Randy's going to know what he has to do when his time comes. Randy's at 22 bonus rings, and Gillingham is at 16 bonus rings. Mm -hmm. That's cumulative from yesterday's qualification, this morning's qualification round, and what we get here in our pro pressure point shoot down. All right, so now we're going to break out as we have the shooters that are within 10 points. So it looks like it's going to be three shooters? I believe so. Mike uh, shot a 12, so that's going to put him at a 70. Randy shot a 12, that'll put him at a 78. So Mike will be within eight of Randy and Tim, so he will get to shoot this last arrow. All right, so it's going to be Rocco Gillingham and Hulbert in our last chance archery, last chance arrow. Mm -hmm. And that is going to be the hyena. 
where they place it and where they place the archers is still yet to be decided as those archers that are exiting the field real wild and Chad Hilburn collecting their arrows they're going to be taken off those go a little quicker than the match beforehand because once the targets get set and once the shooting area gets defined it's just going to be range find set your sight grab some binos and go did he say? I think I heard Mike say they were shooting the Impala. Oh, is that what they're going to do? Yeah. Okay, so they've changed it up. Yeah, and you can see on that 14 there, the high right ring, it's like rolled. Mm -hmm. it's, there's a good look at how much it's rolled. So it actually reduces the size of that. I would much rather have shot the Hyena than that right there because it's rolled up top. So it's not as big as that big flat 14 on that Hyena. And obviously not as easy to see, no big black dots near it. And this really now goes to our last chance archery, last chance arrow. Difficult in these windy conditions to bring our signage out that we normally <laughs> have because it is going to blow across the field. But so these three archers are going to get a chance to range find, set your sight. Mike's got third place wrapped up, so he's on the podium. 14, Mike. That's it. Go for the 14. He's put out the upper cone to say he's shooting at the upper. I think that's one of those things you go for the 14 maybe? I think it's one of those things that maybe say, okay, I want to try to 14 this. I'm going to get to full draw, but if I can't hold my pin very steady or the wind's right. blowing me all over the target, I'm going to default to the upper 12 and just move straight over and shoot at it. I think that's the thought process on that. I'm not certain. I've never put a cone out saying, okay, I'm going to shoot the upper and then shoot the 14. I personally have not done that, so I'm guessing that's the strategy behind it. Uniondale, Indiana works for GM, also owns Bowman's Archery in mm -hmm. Fort Wayne, Indiana. He's going for it. And by the way, his favorite snack, Snicker Bar. <laughs> Appreciate that. As he goes for it. He went, went for, for it. it. Loved the shot. Looks like it crawled just a little just bit high, high left. left of it, I think, but what a good run at it. Mm-hmm. And definitely, had he gotten that, the fans would have erupted here. Mm -hmm. Everyone who's in this audience understands how difficult it is to hit a 14, especially with the wind. And now, all of a sudden, you've introduced <coughs> the sun for the first time this weekend. Yeah. At least if you're these classes that are coming up, now you're looking at it going, okay, if these archers coming off the field, I would definitely be like, so um, yeah. how'd, the, how'd the sun affect your, your setup? Are you hitting left? Are you hitting right? Because it can happen, folks. Yeah. This, Tim's in an interesting spot. I'm wondering what's going through his head right now because he's tied with Randy. Randy gets to go last. So if Tim s steps up and shoots a 12, Randy has to shoot a 12 to tie or 14 to win. If Tim wants to go for the 14, he forces Randy to shoot the 14, which is much harder to hit, in my opinion, but it's harder to hit for Tim too. So he's in an interesting spot. I will tell you this about Tim Gillingham. He is an outstanding wind shooter. His mind gets occupied with this shot with where the wind's blowing, the movement on it. If there's anyone who can hit this 14, it's going to be him. The question is, is he going to go for it? Is he going to risk it all? What he's thinking. Middle. So Randy has to shoot a 10 to tie, 12 to win. I wondered if he wouldn't do that because the wind's tricky. I think Tim was probably just going for that 12. Yeah, if he the hits the 12, 12, yeah, Randy has to hit a ring to win. If he shoots at the 14 and shoots an eight or a five, then Randy just needs a, a 10 to win, which is much easier to hit in this win. So 10 to win because they'll tie on score and mm -hmm. Randy's got more bonus rings. Right. Yeah, Randy can win it outright with a bonus ring. We'll shoot another arrow, I believe, be closest to center if we go to another one. Oh, okay. Um, if he shoots a 10 here, we'll still be tied. Ooh, we didn't like that shot. All right. He got a 10. Okay. So now I believe they will put a mark on either the 12 ring or the center of the 10. Yep. And we'll shoot one arrow closest to center. Score does not matter. Whoever's closest to the middle, regardless of score, should win, I believe. Nope. Sorry. Didn't mean to correct you. Oh, he wins on bonus rings. Oh, he does. The tie is if they were tied on bonus rings. That's, that's right. That's when they go closest to the center. You're right. You're right. My yep. bad. Yep, My yep, bad. Yep. Okay, no, that's the one thing that I always, I always get tripped up on that as well. Yeah. So Randy Morocco is your outright winner here at the Black Eagle Darton Pro-Am. And he wins it from first place. 
and he was in first place at 426. And so for Randy Morocco, able to get that one, carrying the big bonus ring score all the way through. All right, so we're going to talk to Randy real quick. We're going to get a question in for him because, boy, um, there's actually a, a storyline for Randy Morocco and, and this uh, particular big win for him. And so let's talk to Randy. Let's get that headset on him really quickly. Mm -hmm. So, Randy, congratulations. Outstanding win. Coming off of some surgery fresh, right? Yep, about three weeks ago. I got my gallbladder taken out, so <laughs> it's been quite a ride. <laughs> How is that, though, the pressure to just to get that 10 in the final? Uh, it, you know, I'd, I'd rather be crazy nervous uh, in here than, you know, relaxed on a couch. But, it, you know, it's, it, it's, it's amazing how much that thing shrinks when you have, uh, you know, a lot of money and a win on the line. So <laughs> I'm, I'm still kind of shaking a bit, to be honest with you. Well, you did it. Congratulations. Go enjoy your victory. Randy Morocco with a big win here at Uchi Creek. Well, outstanding job for Andy Morocco and Tim Gillingham brought it down all the way to the wire. But we still have more archery on deck for you. After this, we're going to be lining up the women's known pro category. You don't want to miss that. The best 3D archers descended on Uchi Creek for fierce but soggy competition. 
Even in these tricky conditions, the top five in each class come to the finals venue to be crowned champion. But in this archery sport, anything is possible. With an extra bonus ring of 14 points in play at the coveted shootdown, will there be a come from behind victory? Or will the top qualifier play out their fate with destiny? It's time to find out what Mother Nature has in store for us and who will stand on the top step of the podium. It's round two right now. Welcome everyone to the 2024 Delta McKenzie ASA Pro-Am Tour. It's a round two of the Black Eagle Darton Pro-Am here at Uchi Creek in Russell County, Alabama. It's time for the Pro Pressure Point Shootdown as we set the stage for four professional archery matches of this weekend. Hello everyone and welcome to the broadcast booth. I'm Greg White sitting alongside Darren Christianberry and Darren we are set for a very interesting finals match as it has been raining all day yesterday. <laughs> yeah. It kind of dried out this morning with <clears throat> deep cloud cover. Now all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the sun comes out and the wind is blowing. Yeah, it's been, we've seen it all this weekend. Yesterday was as miserable as you could ever want to be on a 3D course. Today, the lighting was absolutely perfect. No wind whatsoever. Here we are in the shoot off for five or six more arrows and it's windy and it's sunny. So we've seen it all. Yeah, we're going to see some great shoot-offs this afternoon. Everybody survived the rain yesterday. They burned some big scores up today, and now we get to settle the score. Yeah, survive the rain is right. I mean, even our cameras were struggling yesterday to get things done. And, of course, when you're dealing with compound bows, there's a lot of moving parts, yeah. and there was a lot of of moisture, a lot of rain flying off of arrows, flying off of strings. What does that rain do to the flight of the arrows it's it just beats them down you can watch them rooster tail all the way to the target i know i shot some targets for more than what they actually were yesterday still impacted low so the range just tricky trying to figure out what your arrows are doing in at your equipment you don't typically practice in that so it's not something you know what to do immediately sometimes there's a little bit of a learning curve yeah and i'll tell you what this place here at uchi creek has been outstanding and you know what we want to show you a little bit more about this awesome venue. Take a look at this. ASA coming at you live from Fort Moore. Uh, I'm just I'm happy to be out here. And I absolutely love this place. The second stop of the 2024 Delta McKenzie ASA Tour rolls into Russell County, Alabama for the Black Eagle Darton Pro-Am. It's a historic ASA location since the tour's been coming here for 27 years, but this year it's got a new name. Archers this weekend will be competing on the grounds of Uchi Creek Campground at Fort Mitchell, Alabama, just across the Chattahoochee River from what was called Fort Benning in Georgia until it was renamed in May 2023 as Fort Moore. The fort serves many purposes for the U.S. military, but the most visible to the ASA is its home base to the U.S. Army Airborne School. As archers shoot their arrows on the competition ranges at Uchi Creek, C-130s and C-17s regularly rumble overhead leaving lines of drifting paratroopers in their wake. The ranges are set in a forested mix of hardwoods and pines where lighting can be tricky depending on shadows and cloud cover. Oh, what a clan. You ready? Are you pulling? Are you pulling? <laughs> yes. No, you don't. Well, I was pulling. You didn't pull. You, <laughs> you weren't pulling at all. So it is a, obviously a very different type of finals venue than what we're used to now. Right, there you go, right in the middle. <laughs> The shootdowns will take place in a scenic section of Uchi Creek overlooking the Chattahoochee River. So it's usually pretty windy down there and um, it's just an interesting finals venue to say the least. I've had some success. I've made some shootdowns here. I usually judge well here. I like coming here. It'll probably take some time for everyone to get used to the name Fort Moore, but what no one expects to change is the intense competition here under the ASA flags at the Black Eagle Darton Pro-Am.
And we have a great crowd on hand here at Uchi Creek as we have four outstanding archery finals coming up. But now let's welcome the third member of our broadcast team, PJ Riley, into the mix as he's got to explain more about the field of play and the scoring rings and the targets we'll be shooting at. Hey, PJ. All right, uh, out here at the ASA, we wanted to explain to you how we score. This here is the Russian boar and our, the way we're gonna score points on here. Anything on the body outside this central area is gonna be worth five points. You're gonna see this big ring here. This ring, anything inside of that, but outside all other rings is eight points. So a hit right here is worth eight points. Uh, inside here, inside this ring, this is our 10 ring. So anything inside here, outside these, worth 10 points. Hit right there, 10 points. Now, inside, you're gonna see three rings here. This ring, don't count that, that's 10 points. These two here are our 12 point rings. The lower one is always in play. If the archer calls the upper, then this one is worth 12 points. When the upper is in play, the lower is only worth 10 points. When the upper is not called, then the upper is only worth 10 points. Out here, we have our high risk, high reward uh, circle. This is worth 14 points. High risk because a miss can put you into an eight or even a little more of a miss, you're into five points and that will have you bleeding a lot of points. That's the way we score it here at ASA. All right, thanks PJ, we appreciate it. And hey, if you're new to the sport, now you know how to score these rings. And boy, Darren Christian Berry, this field of play looks like it is set for archers. We're going to take our first break. When we come back, we're going to come back with women's known pro Paige Pierce, our fourth place qualifier, trying to go for her eighth in a row. Can she get it done? We're going to find out. This baby's bad. <laughs> For more info on the complete 2024 Elite lineup, visit EliteArchery.com. Ryan Jeffries, Mr. Ryan Reed, Chris Hacker, Alan Connor, Benny Barger, and your number one qualifier from Voorheesville, New York, Jacob Sluzard. I thought I could hang with these guys and I wanted to prove that, but winning after five tournaments is... It's just a lot. Hey, Tony, we just got a new site in. We need a product video on it ASAP. I got an appointment. I'm not going to be able to do it. You're going to have to do it. I have 50 other things to do today, and I have to do your job, too. This is a site. You put it on a bow. It has three pins for aiming. Is that good enough? Shop Lancaster Archery Supply for all your archery needs. We've got the gear, we've got the knowledge, we've got the passion. Paige Pierce, your women's open pro champion. Open pro champ, Bodie Turner, and our champion, Casey Koffel, LAS Classic champ, Brady Ellison. Jolti Benham takes the win. Nick Cappers, Classic Open Pro champ. The X-10 is the most successful arrow in competitive archery history, accounting for far more medals than any other individual piece of sporting equipment in Olympic history. Easton introduces the latest innovation to the X-10 lineup, the 4mm Parallel Pro. Parallel Pro offers legendary X-10 precision for all forms of archery. Elevate your precision. Your journey to the podium begins with Easton X-10. I have to shoot the best or there's just no point in doing it. I'm blown away at just how easy each arrow tunes right out of the box. Ultra Arrows, the pinnacle of precision and performance.
Just by the time. For more info on the complete 2024 Elite lineup, visit EliteArchery.com. Ryan Jeffries. Mr. Ryan Reed. Chris Hacker. Alan Connor. Benny Barger. And your number one qualifier from Voorheesville, New York, Jacob Sluzard. I thought I could hang with these guys and I wanted to prove that, but winning after five tournaments is... It's just a lot. Hey, Tony, we just got a new site in. We need a product video on it ASAP. I got an appointment. I'm not going to be able to do it. You're going to have to do it. I have 50 other things to do today, and I have to do your job, too. This is a site. Playing it a little bit safe, maybe a couple extra clicks here and there. I'm pretty much going to go out with the same yeah. game plan as always and hope for the best. Mm -hmm. All right, back to live shots here at Uchi Creek, the Pro Pressure Point Shootdown. Women's known pro on deck, Greg White in the booth with Darren Christianberry. And boy, we mentioned it before, Paige Pierce is on a run right now, but she comes in here qualifying in fourth place. Yeah, she's 10 points behind leader Cassidy Cox. Cassidy's sitting at a 426. Morgan Ribs at a 422. Kenneth Stevens at a 420. And then Paige and Rendon Brooks are, are rounding out the field at 416. So only 10 points from top to bottom. They know the distance. The 12s and 14s are in play. This one is far from decided. But they are shooting pretty thick arrows here, and the wind is blowing. But I think we're ready, and it's time to have P.J. Riley welcome our athletes to the field of play. All right, let's get our women's known pro division started. Our fourth place qualifier with a score of 416 from Grandview, Texas, shooting for PSE, Brendan Brooks. And our fourth place qualifier with a score of 416 from Red Bluff, California, shooting for Botech, Paige Pierce. Our third place qualifier with a score of 420 from Kerrville, Texas, shooting for elite Kenna Stevens. And our second place qualifier with a score of 422 from Natchez, Mississippi, shooting for elite Morgan Reeves. And our number one qualifier with a score of 426 from Albuquerque, New Mexico, shooting for PSE, Cassidy Cox. Well, what a run for Cassidy Cox. Yesterday in the rain, had a commanding lead and able to hold on to it going into our pro pressure point shoot down. And Darren Christianberry, you have a couple of archers that are on the field that are used to wind from the standpoint of they're more on the world archery side of yeah. things. Yeah, I, I wonder, I see Cassidy shooting skinnies and I see Kenna is shooting skinnies. And what I mean by that, they're shooting small diameter arrows. The majority of shooters in ASA shoot fatter arrows because they want to try to clip these bonus rings. But, you know, for wind, for long distance, for for late, less air resistance, you want to shoot skinnies. And I see Cassidy is shooting skinnies and I wonder if she's shot them all weekend, do you know? I don't, I don't believe she did, but I think that really that's that's kind of the move. Yeah. You can see that, that they're breaking out those arrows because obviously you're talking about less wind drift. Yeah, yeah. I know some archers will bring two setups or two sights or two tapes, so going to smaller diameter arrows I think is an advantage in this wind. Yeah, all right, so Cassidy Cox. 
She's shooting lefty. Mm -hmm. Good shot, good release. Yep. You can see that strong bow arm from our leader. But coming out of the gate, this is that the stand mule deer, which is our first target. We've had a couple matches before this, and what we've seen is people continuously shoot to the right mm -hmm. of that target, and it's really the way the wind. Yeah, this is known distance. We mentioned women's known pro, so they do know how far they are, but with this wind, it does not make these rings easy to hit. Right, For Cox, shot. unfortunately, she's going to drop That's it into the eight mm -hmm. ring. All right, so Darren's going to keep shot. score for us. I'm going to do my best. That's the stand mule deer. Now we're going to move over to our elevation javelina. And that's going to be Morgan Reeves. 10, I'll we'll move her to a 432. Morgan Reeves, who we saw at the first round of 2024 in our fourth place in our pro pressure point shoot down. And Kenna, good look at who we just saw, 21 years old, started shooting at the age of 15, got the bug so bad <laughs> that she bought an archery shop. Yes. She's the new owner of M or Leading Edge Archery in Bernie, Texas, I believe it is. I think that's how you pronounce the town, Bernie. I believe so. But yeah, Leading Edge Archery. All right, that's a gold tip Russian boar, and that is just to the right side of the Shibuya Impala. Paige went for that 14. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as you would expect. Yeah. I looked at her before she went on the range, and I said, you going for all 14s? And she just looked at me and said, the wind, what are you going to do? <laughs> that's the Bow Doodle Grazing Doe. That's our fifth target. Now archers are going to rotate over. So the archer in first position, Cassidy Cox, is going to move from the mule deer in position number one over to the elevation javelina. And the shooter, Rendon Brooks, who is our fifth place qualifier on the bow doodle grazing doe, moves over to our number one target, which is the stand mule deer. And they'll keep rotating until we get our five arrows shot. Then what happens? Then anybody within 10 points of the leader will get to shoot a sixth and final arrow on the last chance archery, last chance arrow. So six chances to make your move, ladies. All right, ladies, we'll start your one minute now. All right, Rendon Brooks in attendance, mom, dad, and Logan. She's been youth athlete shooter of the year, middle school shooter of the year, elementary school shooter of the year. <laughs> This is Morgan Reeves. Oh, smashed it. Yeah. Second at London in 23, second at Metropolis in 23, fourth at Foley in 24. Looking to improve that podium spot. Low right again on that mule deer we just saw. Here Paige is trying to be patient. She's like, okay, I got to go here. That wind is wicked Oof. right now. She got some, just some bad luck at the moment. Wind severely picked up for her, but it's a one minute shot clock. We'll see if she's going to let down. Rob Morgan holding the umbrella for <laughs> Smoked it. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Inside out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she's like, oh, yeah, that's a good one. Wow. Paige has got the best mental game of about anybody out here, I think. She's so tough mentally. All right, so the first target we're going to look at. Stan Mule Deer. Cassidy Cox. Cassidy Cox on the Elevation Javelina. Is it 12? I believe. 12, 12 yep. for Cassidy Cox. For All right, so that's a good recovery from that eight. Mm -hmm. Morgan Reeves on the Shibuya Impala. If I'm not 12. mistaken, that's that 49.9 yarder that we that's talked correct. about. Yeah, 50 that's correct. Yeah, 50-yard and smashed it. Massive 12, it. absolutely. In the wind and smashed that 12. Good shot, Morgan. Gold tip Russian boar for Kenna Stevens. And she called upper? She did call upper. And got it. Wow, good 12. shooting, ladies. Bonus rings all over the place. Yeah. And for Paige Pierce on our bow doodle, grazing though It's a 10, 10 for Paige. It looked like from our vantage point initially she smoked it. Yeah. Guess it went a little bit right. <laughs> I don't know what I was seeing. <laughs> <laughs> so for Pierce, our, fir our fourth place qualifier, she's now going to move on to arrow number three to our stand mule deer. And that means that Cassidy Cox is going to move to the Impala that's our Shibuya Impala, and that's the one that's 50 yards downrange. 
if Paige has been paying any attention at all, she's going to know that she's going to hit right on this target. Mm -hmm. Everybody has hit right on this target. I think it's just kind of that's that's the closest to the win target. I mean, the field is open down there, but it just seems it's coming right off that river, I guess. A big gust of wind just <laughs> just hit us here and the fans, and the clock just started, so one minute. Reeves is going to have another look. Let's see if Morgan can go two for two here. Got that uh, Gillingham style s stabilizer oh, set up. She's out to the right. I'm telling you, that's got to be that wind. It's got to be. Yep. And out that's to the right for Cassidy. Yeah. Ken has got a huge smile on her face. I don't know if she's happy or like, wow. I <laughs> so we'll have to see. Just over the top of it. That was the elevation Havelina. So Paige did catch 10. So no points gained, but people can give Paige some points back. Again, the thing with Paige Pierce coming in seven in a row. Won them all last year in this class and won the first one of this year in the women's known pro category. And this is a hungry field of archers that are trying to knock her off her throne. Cassidy Cox with just such a strong shot, but just sends it wide into the eight ring for Cassidy. So eight for Cassidy Cox. This wind is getting tricky. <laughs> it's really, w it's really blowing. A good look at the range finder view That's that Paige is looking Morgan. at. Yeah. That's the first blemish that she's made. Wow, we just went from a round that had a bunch of bonus rings in the last arrow to all of a sudden. Yeah, big gust of wind there. That looks like a 10. Got to be scored for for Kenna. Yeah, Kenna's got a 10. So that's two eights and three tens on that round coming off of a big bonus ring arrow. So archers once again rotate over. So there's the 21-year-old, Kenna Stevens. Out of Kerrville, Texas, who I talked to her dad, and he was actually mentioning that she'd actually been struggling quite a bit. And in the week leading up to this event, they actually made a slight change in the way that she holds the bow on the grip, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, everything just started to click wow. for her. That's a hard thing to do, change your grip, because it's just like breathing. You don't really think about it a lot, but making changes to that part of your shot is uh, not an easy task. But good for her. She's only two points out of the lead right now. She was the 2020 Hoyt Easton Pro-Am High School Female of the Year. She won it. Good strong shot and a good 10. Mm -hmm. She's gaining points on the field by keeping it in the 10 ring on that mule deer. Brooks didn't like, didn't look like she was all happy with that shot, but. It's a good arrow, 50-yard target, just to barely miss that 12. This is an important, real important arrow for Cassidy Cox, who her, sees her lead dwindling. Mm -hmm. 54, Reeves at a 52, Stevens at a 52. 10 for Kenna. So that'll put her at a 62, I believe. Oh, Ooh, is that a 14? Fourteen for Paige Pierce. <laughs> Paige Pierce gunning for the fourteens. On the hardest target out there. Why not? <laughs> She's so tough. Mm -hmm. Puts her to fifty-eight. All right, Rendon. Ten for Rendon. Another solid shot. Good ten for Rendon. Put her to fifty-four. Now we go to Cassidy Cox. Really needs to start getting into some. We're running out of arrows here. This is our fourth arrow. We got one arrow left. Yeah. Ooh. She caught the 10. Okay, that's good. Good solid 10 for Cassidy Cox. 64. So she still takes a two point lead into arrow number five, I believe, if my math is correct. 12. 
Now tied for first place with Morgan Reeves shooting that that 12. Wow. It's all tied up. Now Cassidy Cox is going to go over to the Bow Doodle Grazing Doe. That is 43 and a half yards. It's not an easy shot. However, in terms of like the length of this field and the way the wind's blowing, it's been a, more of a forgiving target. Morgan Reeves, who's tied now, moves over to our Stan Mule Deer, and this is a target that we have seen people again and again hit right into the eight ring. So very important for Morgan Reeves and possibly the person holding her umbrella to give her the information. So when she's looking through the binos like she is now, she's going to be seeing those arrow marks because these were brand new Delta McKenzie targets when we started this. And this is our third match of the day. So for Reeves, she's going to be looking, saying, wait a second, people are hitting right. This, But this can be pretty tricky. And Reeves is calling for the upper. Mm, that's an interesting play there because you've got to aim farther to the right to hit that upper. So I'm interested to see what Morgan does here. And Cassidy Cox as well. So we'll see if Cox is going to go for it. We can see that she, Cassidy Cox has already gone to full draw. So she's not messing around. She's not waiting to find out what Reeves is going to do. You can see those limbs behind that deer in the background moving. Okay. She got a 10. Okay. Nothing lost there. So for Cox, now it's all on Cassidy Cox in terms of is she going to shoot a 10 tied for the lead? Is she gonna, what, did she shoot a 12? But we're looking at Stevens. Mm -hmm. He's two points behind leaders. Going center. Center 10. So the last arrow is going to be interesting. What Paige do? We don't know what Paige did yet. Fixing to find out. All right, so 10 in for 474 by my math. Okay. Kenna Stevens, center shot 10. 472 by my math. You're adding tens. That's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Make, making my <laughs> job easy. <laughs> Paige Pierce out wide, still catches the 10. 10, 468. It's coming off of that 14. I think that's the first 14 we've seen all day here. Mm -hmm. Seen a couple Creek. shot at. Now we go to Rendon Brooks. Okay, so now it's really on Cassidy Cox. What did Cassidy Cox do? She was tied with Reeves. So a 10 is going to keep him tied. If she shoots a 12, she will kick Rendon out of the final arrow. Ooh. All right, ladies. All right, all right. For Cassidy. Yeah. 474. So everybody goes to the final arrow. Everybody's within 10 points. And now we go to last chance archery, last chance arrow. And we're going to see what they're going to do. So they had today brought out the hyena for the first one. Mm -hmm. And then they shot the half Impala. Impala, sorry, the Impala for the second one. So now they're going to make the decision. Now this arrow is unique. So they're going to pick an animal that they're going to go for. And they're going to move the archers to a certain spot. So they're going to have to reset the range finders, redo the site, you know, like redo their mm -hmm. site marks, and then get after it. So could it be the grazing doe that we're looking at right now? This is an opportunity, too, for the archers to get their arrows back. Yep. Do, when you shoot, Darren, do you generally have a favorite arrow, like something that we would call a, sh you know, like shoot-off arrow? Yeah, typically no. Typically no. And I'll have – I try not to carry an arrow in my quiver that I wouldn't shoot. Mm -hmm. um, that mm -hmm. That's goal number one. But – like today, I shot one arrow the whole day. I just kept track of that one arrow. It was working. My line was good. And then, I don't know, about nine targets in, uh, Kevin Cook hit my arrow hard, and he cut one of my fletchings. So it had a tear right in the middle of it. So I just threw it to the back, reached in, and grabbed another one. Didn't even check it because I felt like every arrow in my quiver was good. So, um, so they may have them numbered. You know, number one, number three, number five may be their number one go-to arrow. Uh, it's not uncommon. But... Uh, I try to make sure mine are all really good. All right, so the area of which the archers are going to be shooting has been decided. That's going to be that first cone, and then you have that second cone with number two on it. That if they place it in front of them, that means they're calling upper. Mm -hmm. So it looks like we're going to the bow doodle grazing doe. 
So Rendon's going to go first. With a 14, she goes to 78. If Paige were to hit a 10, they would tie. That would be broken on bonus rings. So there's a lot going on there is here. A lot going on. I could go. I could talk about scenarios on all the different scores, but it would take forever with five shooters. So this is the last chance archery, last chance arrow. Normally you would see some signage up around there, but unfortunately the wind is blowing so hard and that sign's so big, it would be more dangerous than anything else. So for Rendon Brooks, fourteen, it kid. The wind comes completely died in that moment and and shot just a little left. left. Distance Good shoot down for perfect. her. Perfect. She'll end up with a 469. And this is where this last chance archery, last chance arrow gets a little bit tricky because everybody's not shooting at once. Now mm -hmm. they're going to rotate around and this wind has been so tricky. And now we go to the undefeated Paige Pierce. 14 would give her an 82. Her being six points behind Cassidy and Morgan makes it a really tough hill to climb, but it's never over till it's over. So a 14 would really do her well. Um, the girls in front of her would just have to shoot tens to beat her. But if Paige wants to make that 10 ring shrink, a 14 would suit her really well right here. So you can see Paige uses a program to s build her sight tape with, and then she prints out every single yard. And some of us laminate those things. And in Paige's case, she just put it in a plastic baggie and she is not calling the upper so she's going to if she hit goes for the 12 is going to be going for the lower ring so you have to call the upper mm -hmm. generally you you can isn't if you're actually shooting in qualification round you can say to your group hey i shoot uppers all the time yeah. i'll call a lower yeah so it's about that communication when you're with your group yeah you but in this particular case when you come to the finals you the lower is always in play you yeah. have to call the upper there are some guys out there that tell the group before you shoot arrow number one for the day hey i shoot all uppers mm -hmm. i'm going to say that now unless i tell you different because sometimes two or three people shoot the upper in front of you, you're like hey i need to switch i need to shoot a lower on this target so but it's not uncommon to have uncommon to have somebody shoot all uppers she's trying to wait that wind out yeah like i said it's just different different timing so we're probably looking at somewhere in the neighborhood of a 38-yard shot, I would think, judging from the stake it was on before. Just under it. Mm -hmm. Her line was perfect. All right. So Paige Pierce going for the 14. So she's going to end up with a 76. All right. Four, seven, six. Kenneth Stevens, first shoot down. As we go to Kenneth Stevens in her first shoot down. If Kenna gets an eight, she lands on the podium. Anything above that's yet to be determined, but she gets an eight she gets eight points, she was at least top three. Could this be the start of a new talent? Actually, if she hits this target, she gets top three. A five would put her at a 77, one point in front of Paige. There you go. So now the question is, oh, she's calling for upper, so she moved the cone ahead. I'm thinking she shoots the 14 here. Do you? All she has to do is hit it. You think the 21-year-old is just going to get that aggressive? Yeah. Well, if her if her if her umbrella guy's telling her or she knows, all you got to do is hit this target, and you get third place. So, hit the 14 and put the pressure on the other two girls. It's hard to know all that. Yeah, she went at the 10 or the lower 12, upper upper 12. Yeah, she went for upper. She gotcha. Went for upper. Yep. Yeah. Well, she's wrapped up a podium spot, so good for Kenna. The way you do it, you get into your first pro pressure point shoot down. Now we're going to our leaders. So 10 would put her in an 82. Let's do some math here and see what happens with Morgan. She shoots an eight. She ties and probably beats Kenna on bonus rings. Well, count those bonus rings because I think there was only one difference in bonus rings coming into this thing, yeah. 14 to 13. Morgan hit two in the five arrow qualification. And Kenna hit one, I believe. Yep. Okay, so that would mean an eight to wrap up second place. Mm -hmm. Anything higher than that, and it sets the tone for Cassidy yep. Cox. Cassidy will know what she has to do. And how many bonus rings right now between Reeves and Cassidy Cox? Uh, Morgan has 16. Cassidy has 18. Okay. 
So, so the situation is is that whatever Morgan shoots here, Cassidy has to tie it or better to win. Yep. Yep. If Morgan shoots a 10, then all Cassidy do has to do is hit a 10 to win on bonus rings. But for Cassidy, it hasn't been easy. She quite, shot quite a few, a couple of, or a couple of eights, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, she did shoot two eights in the first five targets. Let's see what Morgan does here. A bonus ring would serve her well. Dead center 10. Okay, so that sets the tone. So a good solid shot. She didn't give anything away there. Mm -mm. 484. She's wrapped up at least second. Upper 12 was she did call the upper 12, but as we can clearly see, it's right in the middle of the 10 ring. So that little ring that you see in the middle that looks like lower in the upper, it doesn't really count anything other than a 10 here in ASA competition. Good, solid, strong shot. Second appearance in the pro pressure point shoot down this year. She's 17 years old. <laughs> Can she make all six this season? All right, She's now, tough. Now to Cassidy Cox. What a story. Cassidy Cox has been in the highest of the highs and lows of lows in archery over the years. She has been the USA Archery World Team a couple of years ago and just a magnificent shooter. If you're a young shooter getting into it, just take a look at that bow arm and how strong it is after the shot. She's never won an ASA, is that nope. correct? Yeah, she's been in three shoot downs last year. And now a 10 for victory for Cassidy Cox. The wind is blowing a bit though, left to right. Yes. Got it. She got it. Easy peasy. All right, she needs so Cassidy Cox. After giving a couple points away, able to hold on to it and wins it on bonus rings in a tie with Morgan Reeves, a 17-year-old. What a great shoot down and all the pressure was on Cassidy Cox to just put that arrow in the middle. And it's not as easy as you think. No, that 10 ring gets pretty small when you have to have it. Can't wait to get Cassidy on the mic to see what the nerves were. It's been a while for a big victory for Cassidy Cox. The pride of Albuquerque, New Mexico. Of course, there's there's so many different groups of archers here, Darren. Mm -hmm. You know, there are like these these folks that shoot like that 50 meter stuff, like Paige and Cassie had known each other for a long time. Oh, and yeah. There's like the pure, you know, I've only shot 3D. And Cassie's got so many friends across the board, and she's been around this game for a long time. And uh, now able to pull it off and come away with the victory is Cassidy Cox from Albuquerque, New Mexico. And wow, Cassidy, all the pressure was on in that last shot. How are you feeling right now? I am so excited right now. <laughs> <laughs> How are the nerves on that last shot when you know you just had to put it in the 10 ring? Uh, I, was, I was feeling pretty okay when I thought that I had to hit a 12. I was more nervous, but once I found out I could aim center 10, I was more comfortable with that. Yeah. <laughs> Cassidy, I was curious. I know a lot of the archers choose to shoot larger diameter arrows for the bonus rings. I saw you're shooting skinnies out there. Did you shoot the skinny arrows all weekend during the rain and everything, or did you make a switch? No, I shot these all weekend. Fantastic. That was probably a good business business decision because I know the bigger arrows we fought with yesterday in that rain. So I'm assuming your setup really worked well for you during that rainstorm yesterday? Yes. Um yeah, my skinny arrows are a lot faster than my 23s were, and that helped me a lot. Very good. Congratulations on your first win. That was fantastic. Thank you so much. All right, so Cassidy Cox, your champion in the women's known pro category here in Russell County, Alabama. It's the Black Eagle Darton Pro-Am, the Delta McKenzie ASA Pro-Am Tour, and we'll have more archery coming at you after this.
610 is the most successful arrow in competitive archery history, accounting for far more medals than any other individual piece of sporting equipment in Olympic history. Easton introduces the latest innovation to the X10 lineup, the 4mm Parallel Pro. Parallel Pro offers legendary X10 precision for all forms of archery. Elevate your precision. Your journey to the podium begins with Easton X10. Paige Pierce, your women's open pro champion, open pro champ, Bodie Turner, and our champion, Casey Koffel, LAS Classic champ, Brady Ellison. Jolti Benham takes the win. Nick Cappers, Classic Open Pro champ. Hey, Tony, we just got a new site in. We need a product video on it ASAP. I got an appointment. I'm not going to be able to do it. You're going to have to do it. I have 50 other things to do today, and I have to do your job, too. This is a sight. You put it on a bow. It has three pins for aiming. Is that good enough? Shop Lancaster Archery Supply for all your archery needs. We've got the gear. We've got the knowledge. We've got the passion. For more info on the complete 2024 Elite lineup, visit EliteArchery.com. This baby's bad. <laughs> For more info on the complete 2024 Elite lineup, visit EliteArchery.com. Hey, Tony, we just got a new site in. We need a product video on it ASAP. I got an appointment. I'm not going to be able to do it. You're going to have to do it. I have 50 other things to do today, and I have to do your job, too. This is a site. You put it on a bow. It has three pins for aiming. Is that good enough? Shop Lancaster Archery Supply for all your archery needs. We've got the gear, we've got the knowledge, we've got the passion. The X-10 is the most successful arrow in competitive archery history, accounting for far more medals than any other individual piece of sporting equipment in Olympic history. Easton introduces the latest innovation to the X-10 lineup, the 4mm Parallel Pro. Parallel Pro offers legendary X-10 precision for all forms of archery, Elevate your precision. Your journey to the podium begins with Easton X-10. Well, at least it ain't too rainy today. It's been pretty nice so far. Yeah, just enough to get us all wet. If it starts getting more rain, it will make the string a little heavier, the arrow's getting wet, and probably gonna hit a little bit lower. Other than that, it's not that bad. It's worse if it was windy, I think. Welcome back to Uchi Creek Pro Pressure Point Shootdown. As known pro is on deck. 
And we're kind of laughing there in Christian Berry <laughs> because, yeah, it ended up raining after they were shooting that pretty hard and heavy. But here's the way they came off after two days of qualifying. They shot 40 arrows for 400 points as par, and here's where they stand. Curtis Broadnex at 50 up. Yeah, that's, wow. That's a bunch. Yeah, I don't know how many bonus rings he shot, but coming 25. in at 450. 25. Dane Johnson in second at a 442. Kyle Douglas at 440. Justin Hannon at 438. Chris Perkins at 438. So you got 12 points between first and fifth, which is actually quite a bit for the known pro. A lot of times they're a lot tighter than that, but I, I think the rain yesterday, that whole round yesterday is what affected the scores. But Curtis at 50 up, Chris at 38 up, 14 ring in play. It's not over till it's over. And looking at that, Curtis Broadnax, I mean, you got to take into account that, what, 460? has been a kind of a typical score yeah. in the dry. So 450 in the extreme rain has been outstanding. Solid round. Now let's take a look at what happened last time we had our known pro category, which was in Foley, Alabama. The competition in the known pro division seems to ramp up every year. After qualifications, Kyle Douglas went into the shoot down with a score of 60 up, which used to be a score that seemed unreachable. Now it has become common. And Douglas's lead was only two points over Ace Coleman when the finals started. And your first place qualifier, Kyle Douglas. Not surprising, the finals was a bonus ring sniping fest. And it's 14, 14 for Hanson. For Stefan. Unfortunately for the guys behind him, Douglas hit a bonus ring on all five targets in the finals to put out of reach any chance of someone taking away the win. Is anybody within 10 points of Kyle Douglas after Hold this upper. one? That's going to be it. Since no one was within 10 points of Douglas after five arrows, there was no need for a sixth. Ace Coleman Hear and that. Jimmy Lutz have tied. But there was a sixth arrow shot by Ace Coleman and Jimmy Lutz to break their tie and determine who finished second and who finished third. Oh. Coleman's arrow was just a bit closer to the middle of the 10 oh, ring than man. Lutz's, and so they finished two and three respectively. That was a good one. That one felt really good. I uh, went out there and kind of executed my game game plan perfectly so I uh, I can't ask for a better weekend it feels good to start off the first ASA with a with a win you know it's been a rough weekend my grandpa passed away Thursday night um, while I was out here so kind of feels cool to to be able to do that and know he's watching down on me But this week is totally different, Aaron Christian Barry. We are outside. Yep. The sun has been going in and out, and we have wind to contend with. It's not as easy as it was indoors, so let's see what's going to happen. And we're getting ready for our known pro category. And we know that the distance of these targets that are set down has been a variety. We have Stan Mule Deer on target number one, and that's going to be a 45-yard poke. And then we have an elevation javelina. That's 37 yards downrange. 50 yards downrange is going to be our Shaboya Impala. Gold tip Russian boar on 34. And then we have our bow doodle grazing doe at 43 and a half yards. But we're ready to introduce our archers to the field of play. Here's P.J. Riley. All right, here we go. Now we're going to get started with the known pro division. Our fifth place qualifier with a score of 438 from Ontario, Canada, shooting for Matthews, Christopher Perkins. And our fourth place qualifier with a score of 438 from Asheville, North Carolina, shooting for elite, Justin Hanna. Our third place qualifier with a score of 440 from Liberty, Utah, shooting for Matthews, Kyle Douglas.
And our second place qualifier with a score of 442. From Laota, Indiana, shooting for Matthews, Dane Johnson. And our number one qualifier with a score of 450. From Social Circle, Georgia, shooting for elite, Curtis Broadnax. Thank you, PJ. All right, so we're ready for this one. Greg White sitting in the booth with Darren Christian Berry as the archers have a look down range through their range finders. And that's what the known category is known for. <laughs> yes. Uh, know, that's a play on words there. <laughs> but yeah, that's the known is they know the distance. And that's the difference between the known and the unknown classes, of course. Should make the rings a lot easier to hit when you know the distance, but you throw the wind factor in there and 12, 15, 18, 20 thousand dollar factor in there. Sometimes they're not as easy to hit. And of course, if you look at our first round, which you saw the rewind a little while ago, and there's a good look at the targets they're going to be, they're going to be shooting for. Is the Stan Mule Deer is on the left part of your screen, and the Elevation Javelina, that's our first and second targets. And of course, that's going to be Curtis Broadnax. And one thing to look out for is that, depending on the wind, it's blowing slightly. You got to watch the right side of that Stan Mule Deer. People have been hitting right. Curtis is going to know that by now. He should. I'm interested to what, yeah, I don't know if he's an upper. He did call upper, so he shot just left of the upper there. The guys behind him should be aggressive because they're 12 points behind. These arrows go fast, so if you're going to make up points, you got to do it quick. That was a good look at Christopher Perkins, who has got more wins in this class than anyone else. And there's Kyle Douglas, who won last time. And by the way, Kyle Douglas is the only archer from our Foley, our first one of the year, Alabama to make the shoot down again. Repeat shoot off. Mm -hmm. For this year. 10 for Curtis. All right, so Broadnack starts off with a solid 10. And, and trust us, we've been through a lot of matches on this field. That first target, the Stan Mule Deer, a 10 is a really good mm -hmm. score. 10 for Dane. Dane Johnson, elevation Havelina. In with a 10. Good look at Dane, big old young man. He's been doing this for years. His dad's been right by his side. Mm -hmm. 10 for Kyle Douglas on that Shaboya Impala. Moves him to a 450. Over to Justin Hanna, Asheville, North Carolina. An ASA shooter of the year in known pro category before. Oh, and he goes right for the 14. <laughs> Hanna's not playing around. That will help your cause. 452. And Christopher Perkins is our fifth place qualifier at a 38. And of course, that is based on bonus rings. Hannah comes into the same points scored, but on the bonus rings, which are the 12s out in qualification, he had 23 versus Perkins 21. Chris started off with a five right there. He's got a big hill to climb now if he's going to try to get back on that podium. And for Christopher Perkins, recently engaged. So congratulations to Christopher Perkins on the engagement. I did ask Christopher about uh, his favorite snack, and he said that he likes peach rings. You ever had that? Yes. He loves them. It's like a, a gummy worm in a ring, but yeah. peach flavored. So I hadn't had it before, so he claims he's going to bring a bag down from Canada for me. Coated in sugar. Yeah, coated yeah. in sugar. <laughs> My favorite part. <laughs> On to arrow number two, and Christopher Perkins rotates from our Bodoodle grazing doe all the way over to the Stan Mule Deer, our first position target. I don't think he'll let up. I think he'll shoot it every 14 now. Yep, and he did, just over the top of it. Gonna give him another five. All right, Christopher Perkins on the so Perkins Mule bid to try to, <laughs> he's won eight of these. In the known pro category in his career, and he's trying to be the first shooter to go into double digits. And for this one, it's slipping through his fingers. Mm -hmm. That's got tough. Got four more shots at it this 2024 season. 
course, we're here now is at the Black Eagle Dart and Pro-Am. Uh, going down south, Curtis Brodnax. 472 for Curtis. So Curtis didn't have a blemish on his card then. 50 up with 25 bonus rings. Unbelievable. That's crazy in that weather. Wow. All right, Dane Johnson. Dane Johnson, place. the Shiboya Impala. Uh, Upper 12 was called. And that's that's Four, not Four. smoking it. He got so that's it. nice and solid. And if you're new to archery, all that arrow has to do is just contact that scoring ring in some form or another, and it's called the higher point value. That was a no doubter. Ooh, that's Hannah a close going one. For it again. This is Kyle. Oh, here. sorry, Kyle. Yeah, Kyle. That's right. Gosh, that's Kyle close. for the 14. He got it. Got it. Mm -hmm. Nice. 464. That was the gold tip Russian boar. Now we go over to Justin Hanna. And Hanna. Did he go back to back? No, nope. nope. middle. 10. 462 now for Justin. And that's the Bow Doodle Grazing Doe. That's 43 and a half yards away. So our longest one is that Shibuya Impala at 50 yards. As Hannah now is going to move to our stand mule deer, that's 45 yards downrange. But the thing is, it's been very tricky on the wind, that wind going left to right. We don't know if it's kind of quartered away. Maybe it's catching yeah. some people off or, you know, even where they're standing, it looks like it's relatively flat ground, but it also looks to us that it might be slightly coming our direction. Yeah, yeah. You know, slightly left to right downhill, so you got to remind your bubble. It's tricky to read. It's also tough, too, mentally, because if you make a mistake, you know, Chris has shot two fives. I mean, he's going for it. He's got nothing to lose, and I appreciate that effort. But, like, in Curtis's position, you know, if he's he had a big lead coming in. He can't go crazy, so he's got to be shooting a little bit different defensive while everybody else's guns are blazing. Yep. So this is a tough class. This is tough positions to be in. Conditions are a little bit funky. Um, three more arrows to go at least to see what happens. For Dane Johnson, he's called the upper 12. Might be a strategy thing where he might be thinking 14 at this point. He's more in a battle with Kyle Douglas, I think, than he is catching Curtis mm -hmm. Brodnax at this point. Didn't like something there. Yep. Good decision. Call that a good decision arrow. Dane's a big old boy from northern Indiana. Sure is. Hearing impaired as well. Always shoots with his hearing aids in. Doesn't want to come across as having an advantage for any distractions. And so he tries to shoot with his hearing aids at normal tones. He's holding that bow good, nice and steady. <laughs> oh, wow. He just smoked that elevation javelina. This is our stand mule deer in lane number one. That's Justin Hanna. Ten. And it goes right to the right. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, trust me, the wind is blowing. Not only is the wind blowing at this point and the sun is out, but we're in shade. But all of a sudden, there's yellow pollen everywhere. It is in your throat, it's on my computer, <laughs> yes, it is on the lenses of our cameras, up. and I guarantee you that it's also getting on the lenses of the shooters, mm -hmm. as well as their, if they have a clarifier inside their peep sight. Here's your leader, Curtis Brodnax, shooting for elite. What bow is he shooting, Darren? He's shooting a verdict, left-handed verdict. Left-handed verdict, and he goes a little right. Still a 10 ring, though. Nothing wrong with that in his position. And that's a kind of like feel for Curtis. Curtis, he's got such a lead right now that putting it on cruise control and really in the known pro category at the level we're shooting, shooting at the big 10 ring is probably the safe play. Yeah, you for sure. You mentioned it earlier. Yeah. Yeah, that's the way to go. But there's Dane Johnson who comes in with a 14. So now he gets a four-point four, chunk seven, back eight, on Curtis. Eight. Yeah, he's only four points behind Curtis right now. So now the question is what also – if he separates himself from Kyle Douglas. I believe it's a 10 from Kyle. Ooh, that's close, but I think it's just a 10. And look, for Dane Johnson, yeah. he's won this twice. Ten for Kyle. That's here. right. This is his place. Mm -hmm. That's right. He got his first win here. Yeah, formerly called Fort Benning, now called Fort Moore. A lot of shooters refer to it that way. We refer to it as Ooch Creek. <laughs> Pro pressure point shoot down here in Russell County, Alabama. This is the 2024 Delta McKenzie ASA Pro-Am Tour, and we are at our second round of the season. It's the Black Eagle Darton Pro-Am. 
We're now, what, on arrow number four already? Yep, this will be their fourth. Four arrows of five. So four of the archers are within 10 points of Curtis still. And that's the key because whoever's within 10 points of our leader is going to go to a sixth arrow, which is our last chance archery, last chance arrow. The mouthful. Yes. That is that deal. <laughs> but it sure is rhythmic. So it looks like four of the five archers are shooting at upper 12s this time. Justin mm -hmm. Hanna is shooting at the lower, and I think on the javelina. Correct, he's yeah. on the javelina, 37 yard poke down the range. Elevation javelina. Rodnax having another look as he is on that uh, gold tip Russian. I wonder if he's looking at that Russian like he might go for it. It's 34 yards. Some of his competitors have hit it. He's looking to see what Dane did. Yeah, Dane could have caught that 12. It depends if he pulls a line or not. That was actually smart by Curtis to see what Dane did. Now, I think I think Curtis will just shoot at a 12. Kyle went for that 14. He's close as well. Oof. He called upper. That's close. Did call upper. Close to the right. We had a lot of close arrow calls. There's a good look at Kyle. He's dangerous. All right, first up, Kyle Douglas. You saw that little bit of a oh, ginch at the end. And I think that's four. it. He might have caught it. I think that's it. And that's the response to Dane Johnson's 14. 14 he got Kyle it. Douglas. Wow. 488. Another bonus ring for Kyle Douglas. Trying to get two in a row. And the one thing is, is that we did have, during that minute of shooting, we had a couple seconds there where it was pretty calm. Dane Johnson was one of the ones who let an arrow go when it was nice and calm. That's lower 12, mm -hmm. no question. Justin, Justin Hanna, as you mentioned, he was the only archer that didn't call the upper. Yep. He was able to nail it. 484 for Justin, if I'm correct. And for Christopher Perkins. And Christopher Perkins. Drum roll, please. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> he's he's got just a tick much heat in his bow right now. A little bit. 461. If fives were a world championship, he would be world champ. Good look at Curtis there. I think it's just a 10, but I can't see, obviously. Oh. Uh-oh. Uh, I, th I think they're going to call that I one. I think that's a 12. I believe you might be right, sir. But we've talked about this before. Our perspective isn't always the correct one, but it is this time. That's big for Curtis right there. That puts him at a 494. He needed that, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, because everybody that's inching closer to him, he's keeping that distance, and good for him. This is one archer, Curtis Brodnax. If, if you've ever heard of something called target panic, this young archer has worked his way through it. He's gone through it the last couple right. of years and put in so much work to put himself in this position. 488. Yeah, he came in off the range today and told me that he was leading again. I said, how? <laughs> and, and I wasn't trying to be, I just was like, Curtis, what's going on in that head of yours? Because we shot indoor nationals last weekend, and, you know, he didn't have the weekend he was hoping for, and I'm not dissing on him at all, but I'm just like, how do you flip that switch in just a few days to do it? And he just had a big grin on his face. He's like, ah, I was just working with releases, man. And I'm like, awesome, good for you. <laughs> so... He's got something going on there that I can't perceive or conceive or understand, but he's got it figured out. Right, Arrow number five. Okay, so here we go. Four of the five are, everybody's calling upper except on that Havelina again. And that's Kyle. Mm -hmm. Tim's in his ear down there telling him what he needs to do, but the Havelina has got such a small 14 ring and it's, 37 yards. All right, so Hannah needs to do whatever Curtis Brodnax is going to do at this point in order to give himself an opportunity to shoot that final last chance archery, last chance arrow. Yeah. After this arrow, Christopher Perkins will will head home. After a yeah, Curtis is six points over Dane and Kyle right now, and he's ten points over Justin. So, and Brodnax, of course, won a really close battle last year in Camp Minden. So Brodnax 
looking for his first win of 2024. Right, this is that, that is Dane. Dane Johnson, four, There's Dane here. He's got an eight for sure. He's low right of that 14. Yep, that's an eight. So that's a 496 for Dane. Elevation Havelina. There's Tim Gillingham working with Kyle Douglas. <laughs> 12 for Kyle. Okay. Four, that puts him at 500. 500. That's a tough number to hit. That's crazy, isn't it? 100 over par? Yeah. Just Ooh. low right for Justin. Four. He was gunning nine, for it, though. You got to tip the cap to yep. hand on that one. Yeah, no, he he almost had to have that just to have a sniff. All right, for Christopher Perkins. As I said, Christopher Perkins. Full house, fives and Here's Curtis. Oh, Can he there hang on to that lead? And what we heard, oh, 14, 14 for Mr. Perkins. There you go. On a string of fives and eights. 75. Breaks it with a 14. <laughs> that means we're going to move to our leader, Curtis Broadnax. And it looks like he center punched a 10. I believe so. 504. Yep. Okay, so 504. So anyone who's got a 94 or better is going to shoot our last chance archery, last chance arrow. Dane Johnson will f shoot first. Kyle Douglas will shoot second. And Curtis will shoot last. Justin Hanna gets fourth, and Chris Perkins is fifth. There it is. All right. So it looks like they're going to, let's see, that's the Shibuya Impala. Impala. Not the easiest 14 to see or aim at. So we'll find out, are they gonna use the mule deer, mm. the stand mule deer? Of course, that's gonna turn into the last chance archery, last chance arrow. Generally what we see is you'll see them break out the hyena, which is the, mm -hmm. the sixth target. But because of the windy conditions today, They've been actually choosing targets that are already sitting on the range. And we also have, a, you know, you normally break out the last chance archery, last chance arrow signage, but with the wind the way it's been, it's been howling. Re I would say probably, what, the last 30 minutes, it's the, the gusts have yeah. calmed down? Yeah. It's still windy, but it just hasn't been quite as brutally yeah. gusty as we've seen. It's breezy, but not horrible. Mm -hmm. This 14 ring's a little sketchy on this thing here. It's not defined. It's not real definitive in that foam. But I imagine we're going to see at least two of them shot at. So Dane Johnson, just off to the right, where the archers are looking right now, he's just up ahead. And in one of our camera views, he's nestled behind a tree. There's the last chance archery, last chance arrow. So Dane Johnson has got his range finder out. He already has got his mark, and he's setting his sight currently. So what they've done is they're using this target, but they move the archers to a different distance. This isn't really that big on the drama side when you're in the known pro category. For sure. Yeah, it's uh, They moved him closer anyway. So initially it was a 45-yarder. So I don't know. Guess. You're, uh, you're a range judger. Would you say they're probably six yards closer? All right, so let's just 30, say 39. 39? Yeah, 39 yards. It's not easy no. by any stretch of the imagination, but it's also not the most difficult shot they get. So for currently third place, Dane Johnson, eight points behind Curtis Broadnax. Got to imagine 14. He's got third wrapped up. Yeah, nothing to lose. Yep. There he goes. Smoked it. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Big nod of the head. Just yep. another day at the got office it. for Dane Johnson. <laughs> Outstanding shot. Puts him at a 5'10", I believe, if my math is correct. All right, so but that now sets the benchmark because he's got the highest score on the field with two archers left to shoot. Mm -hmm. So Kyle needs a 10 to take second from him with bonus rings, I believe. That's probably what, only our third or fourth 14 of the yeah. day? Yeah, he's going to have to shoot a 14. 14, and, and Curtis is in great shape because Curtis has Kyle on bonus rings. No, no, that may not be right. 
this may come down to a bonus ring shoot off. If Kyle 14's this, Curtis has to hit a bonus ring to win, I believe. Yeah, but would the 12 bonus ring do it? Yes, a 12 would do it. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And the 12's a little bit larger than the 14 ring. The 12 would be easier to aim at for me. It's at a eh, flatter part of the target. It's yeah. a little bit larger ring. You've got or maybe that, it's the same size. You've got yeah. that muscle definition there. I think the... I think the of course, you do have the core. The point of the core makes that pretty easy to see as well. Yeah, I see what you're saying, yeah. So Kyle needs this one to even make it interesting. Got He's it. He's got it. He went for it. 514. So that guarantees him second place. Guaranteed second. Dane Johnson in at 510. So now a 10 is going to tie him. And according to your calculations, that means Kyle Douglas is going to win. So for Curtis Brodnax, if he wants this win, he's got to go for a bonus ring. He has to hit a ring, I believe. Yeah, he does. So as confirmed by what we're hearing here in the field by Mike Terrell. So your bet is go just go for a 12 ring. Depends on what he wants to see. I, for me, it would be easier to aim at a 12. I know the target better. I know the references against that shoulder. Does that 14 look bigger than the 12? The 14 is bigger. Oh, yeah. It's less less definition unless he can pick up those arrow holes there. So he probably his odds are probably better at the 14 because it's bigger. But I think I could aim better at it if I was shooting at a 12. He Big. did put the cone out for upper. Biggest bonus ring of the year so far for Curtis Prodnax. Ooh, and it went okay, right. Let's see what we got. It's under it. Kyle so Kyle Douglas ends up on bonus rings coming from behind to win this tournament. So Kyle's going to take that win. Is that right? Kyle is going to take that win on bonus rings. Wow. A heartbreaker for Curtis Brodnax. Yeah. But what an effort for him. But for Kyle Douglas, he wins another one. Goes two for two on the season for Kyle. And Kyle Douglas came in third place, 10 points back. But the key was is that he was only one bonus ring behind Curtis Brodnax. Isn't that something? Curtis is going to be thinking about that strategy at the beginning. And they're just going for those 10s. It's yeah. In this class now, it's like you've got to start gunning for bonus rings straight out of the gate, it's even with a 10-point lead. It's become such a, a can't miss. You know, it really is. You you have to hit the rings. You can't ever lay up and play safe because the guys behind you, they got nothing to lose. And Kyle had nothing to lose there. He just mashed the gas, and poor Curtis didn't want to give anything up. I don't blame him. Curtis didn't do anything wrong. I don't think he did either. I don't think he did anything wrong. Kyle just mashed the gas and took that win. And halfway through this match, it looked like it was Dane Johnson and Kyle Douglas battling it out for yeah. second place. But just like that, Kyle Douglas coming back from a 10-point deficit and a single bonus ring. Big W on this one. Kyle, how does it feel? That was awesome. I, <laughs> I knew I had a long ways to make up in the shoot-off, and I knew it was possible. I've done it before, but I knew I just had to go out there guns a-blazing and probably hit some hard 14s, and luckily I was able to make it happen. Kyle, you have done about everything, indoors, outdoors. Do you have any fear at all? Does anything ever scare you when you're out there shooting these arrows? <laughs> I wouldn't say scare me, no. I mean, there's <laughs> definitely times you're more nervous than others, but I've been in enough situations now. It, it's, you know, you just kind of go to work and, and do what you're supposed to do. Well, you did your job well right there. You took that win. I, we were just talking. I don't think Curtis really made any mistakes. You just hit some 14s, and you took that win. Congratulations on back-to-back. -back. <laughs> Thanks. I appreciate it. All right, so Kyle Douglas, your known pro champion. And wow, he did it in fine style coming from third place, the Pro Pressure Point Shootdown. It's the Black Eagle Dart and Pro-Am. Our second round of the Delta McKenzie ASA Pro-Am Tour here in 2024. Great archery action and more coming at you after the break. I have to shoot the best or there's just no point in doing it. I'm blown away at just how easy each arrow tunes right out of the box. Ultra arrows, 
the pinnacle of precision and performance. The X-10 is the most successful arrow in competitive archery history, accounting for far more medals than any other individual piece of sporting equipment in Olympic history. Easton introduces the latest innovation of the X-10 lineup, the 4mm Parallel Pro. Parallel Pro offers legendary X-10 precision for all forms of archery. Elevate your precision. Your journey to the podium begins with Easton X-10. Ryan Jeffries, Mr. Ryan Reed, Chris Hacker, Alan Connor, Vinny Barger, and your number one qualifier from Voorheesville, New York, Jacob Sluzard. I thought I could hang with these guys and I wanted to prove that, but winning after five tournaments is, it's just a lot. Hey, Tony, we just got a new site in. We need a product video on it ASAP. I got an appointment. I'm not going to be able to do it. You're going to have to do it. I have 50 other things to do today, and I have to do your job, too. This is a sight. You put it on a bow. It has three pins for aiming. Is that good enough? Shop Lancaster Archery Supply for all your archery needs. We've got the gear. We've got the knowledge. We've got the passion. I have to shoot the best or there's just no point in doing it. I'm blown away at just how easy each arrow tunes right out of the box. Ultra Arrows, the pinnacle of precision and performance. Hey, Tony, we just got a new site in. We need a product video on it ASAP. I got an appointment. I'm not going to be able to do it. You're going to have to do it. I have 50 other things to do today, and I have to do your job, too. This is a sight. You put it on a bow. It has three pins for aiming. Is that good enough? Shop Lancaster Archery Supply for all your archery needs. We've got the gear. We've got the knowledge. We've got the passion. The X-10 is the most successful arrow in competitive archery history accounting for far more medals than any other individual piece of sporting equipment in Olympic history. Easton introduces the latest innovation to the X-10 lineup, the 4mm Parallel Pro. Parallel Pro offers legendary X-10 precision for all forms of archery. Elevate your precision. Your journey to the podium begins with Easton X-10. sub four pounds, eight feet per second faster. Our goal wasn't just light and fast. It was how light and how fast. Yeah, buddy. I have to shoot the best or there's just no point in doing it. I'm blown away. At Welcome back to the 2024 Delta McKenzie ASA Pro-Am Tour. Round two is the Black Eagle Darton Pro-Am here in Russell County, Alabama. We're at Uchi Creek for the Pro Pressure Point Shootdown and we have more archery on deck. But right now, we have a special treat for you. The first round of the year in Foley, Alabama, in the Open Pro category, we had a surprise winner of Brady Myers. And now we get to go all the way back in time to the studio with PJ Riley talking to Brady. Check this out. First ASA of 2024, the Hoyt Easton Pro-Am in Foley, Alabama, 20-year-old Brady Myers in just his second year as a pro won his first ever national level pro tournament competing in the open pro division. We sat down with Brady after the tournament to talk about that milestone accomplishment. I can't imagine the pressure on that last shot. There's Levi Morgan, the greatest open pro 3D shooter of all time, arguably 13 time ASA shooter of the year. He comes up almost identical to last year. He shoots this 14 crazy 
to put all the pressure on you, what was going through your mind at that moment then? So I had two numbers. I figured he probably hit the 14. So I had my number, which I thought it was exactly. And then I had another number for if I just had to shoot a 10. So pretty much I just I really focused on the number because I didn't real I didn't want to focus on making the shot because then I just okay. get nervous and then I tense up. So I just kept my mind on other things and I put the right number on and focus where I need to aim because it was a black target. It wasn't yeah it wasn't the easiest to hold on. I could just faintly see like the ten ring maybe right and I right. kind of lose lose it a little bit. So I just really got my spot and just. I knew I had to get the shot off quick. If I held too long, it probably wouldn't go good. So I got up there and made it go quick, and it landed perfect. So Talking to you here, you have that personality of a lot of Kyle Douglas, Jesse Broadwater. Yeah. I always said, like, Jesse could shoot a zero or he could shoot an 11, and you can't tell the difference. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know what the difference is that he shot like there. When After I shot that arrow, too, it's my – my dad asked me what Levi say to you. I don't even remember what he said to me. Congratulations. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I saw your reaction. People were like, man, he's just stone cold. And I was like, I think he's shocked right now. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I don't get overly excited too easy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I didn't know what to think, really. One thing that we noticed uh, in the shoot down, several of us noticed, was, you know, that last shot. Uh, came down to the last arrow, and there's 13-time ASA Open Pro Shooter of the Year, Levi Morgan. He hits this incredible 14, which puts all the pressure on Brady Myers, who's in his second year as a pro. Uh, you know, never been in that pressure situation before, and he hits the 12 to take the win. The cameras caught Levi, and instead of a reaction, you know, that you might expect of, oh, man, I just lost this tournament, it was more one of appreciation where you can tell somebody who's been in that situation that he's like, all right, that's a good shot. I can appreciate that. So it was just a cool moment that uh, several of us noticed. So we wanted to talk with Levi about that a little bit. So here he is, Levi Morgan. Thanks for being here. Yeah, absolutely, man. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. <laughs> sure. So um, Levi, you know, Big tournament situations, you've been in a million of them. I know you've said before, hey, I've made that shot a bunch. I've missed that shot a bunch. You've been on all ends of it. Uh, just give us a quick recap before we watch that about what that's like for the last arrow, that kind of pressure. Yeah, I mean, that's really what you live for or what you should live for as a competitive shooter uh, to be in that situation, right? I, I I remember finding myself there early on and it being a really miserable feeling. Like, what have <laughs> I put myself here for? You know, what have I got myself into type of thing? But uh, the more you're there and the more you learn about yourself, it's really what, what you shoot for, you know, is to hope. It's like uh, as a baseball kid, you practice the bottom of the ninth, two outs, bases loaded, right? swinging for the fences and so to have to hit a 14 on that final shot I mean that's kind of like of course you want to win by 20 points but it's not nearly as fun right um, maybe for my mom and dad it's I think they said they're the only people I've ever heard say that was way more fun for them to watch uh, <laughs> but even as a shooter I love that you know that uh, gotta have it gotta hit it moment because it was really the test of of what you're made of, you know, what what's yeah. going on in your mind? Are, are you confident enough and can you pull this off? So there's no, there's no better feeling than standing there and, and just, just smashing it, but there's no worse feeling than totally choking and falling on your face. And I've done both. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's take a look at this clip here. I think we've got it queued up. Let's, let's see this. So Levi, we mentioned this, that this is basically exactly the same thing that happened last year. You yeah. needed a 14 on the last target. Yeah, I know. I find myself in this situation a lot, it seems like. It's not on purpose, but, um, <laughs> you know, it's so funny how calm you look out there, but what's going on inside is completely different. So you're not as calm as you look right there. No, I mean, <laughs> I am really focused on finding my spot. It's hard to see there, so I try to keep my mind off off of that. And I was focused on that black, that dark spot where Jack had missed high. So you hit that 14, and then, like in your mind, are you thinking, "All right, I got it one"? Or no. are you? 
You haven't gotten that. I yet. never think that. No, even okay. even even last year, whenever I hit it and Dan had to shoot next, I was ninety nine percent sure Dan was going to just smash that fourteen, and I was going to end up second. I never assume anybody's going to miss, you know. So gotcha. So then tell us what this is like. Uh, you know, this was a long time ago for you, but here he is. This is a second year pro, his first ever shoot down. He needs this to win the tournament. What, fr from your experience, what's going on inside his head? Um, thinking back to my first win, it was a lot, lot, lot better in here, <laughs> you know? Because, <laughs> um, I mean, he had shot so incredible to get to this point. Yeah. And I expected him to hit this 12, to be honest with you, too. You did. Um, just mashed it, you know. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, honestly, that's a nervous place for him to be, and that's a big place for him to be in. A lot of people poke right there. You know? Yeah, so right. I knew he had shot incredible to get to that point, but that was really the test to see what he was made of and, and I was happy to see him stand there and, and just win it. You know, I know how tough that is. That's a that's not an easy thing to do. You know, yeah. even watching it, you're like, man, must be a lot of pressure. But to stand up there and do it, it's like um not a lot of people will ever get to know what that feels like. And that's a right. not an easy thing. <laughs> And so, I, like we were mentioning before, I would think even, you know, you being a fan of the game, not mm -hmm. al let alone being a, you know, 13-time ASA Open Pro Shooter of the Year, but you love the game, mm -hmm. but I would think that you can appreciate, all right, that's a good shot. Oh, it's incredible. And he stood up there totally unshaken and, and smoked it, and I have to at that point smile and just be appreciative, and I'm a fan of him. I think he's a, he's a great guy got a ton of potential and i'm never gonna be you know upset when i get beat like that um like you that, know, for there's sure. nothing that i can do now I, I get upset when i do something stupid and lose the tournament myself but when i stand up there and mash a 14 and he comes right behind me and center punches a 12 to beat me that's a fun game that's a fun that's the way i like to play the game and uh, he just earned it so yeah. it's, it's just cool to see. I'm happy to see it. I'm, I, I, I don't like to lose. I think everybody knows that, and I'm always doing everything I can. But to stand to see a 20-year-old come in and just wipe the floor with everybody, it's pretty cool, you know. And it's, <laughs> yeah, it's scary. I don't, I, you know, I'm going to try to beat him at the next one. But if he beats me the same way, I, I have to smile and, and congratulate him. So. <laughs> All right, Levi. Well, we appreciate your time today. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, PJ. Let's get back to the shoot down. Oh, thanks, PJ. That was quite a treat to hear from Levi Morgan and his insight. And welcome back to the broadcast booth. Greg White sitting alongside Darren Christianberry, and we've been, well, We've been treated some great archery so far, haven't we? <laughs> yes, we have. It's been interesting to watch. Uh, the weather's a little bit of a factor today. It's been a factor all weekend, but uh, no surprises on who wins, no surprises on what we're seeing out there. It's just been great archery so far. And the sun is out right now, and it's moving all around this course, but we're ready for the women's pro category. And, of course, this is a – got to judge the distance, and you are looking at what is true, 420 for Sharon Wallace, Darren Christianberry. You get 20 points ahead in this category is unbelievable. I shot the same range Sharon shot today, and I heard she shot 18 up because I believe she was two up after yesterday's round. So to shoot 18 up on the 20 targets we shot today, I don't think I could have done that with a range finder. She shot amazing. Aaron McGlattery in second, 400. Kaylee Pettifer in third at 400. Cara at 396. Emily McCarthy at 389. This is going to be a race for second and third, a 20-point lead. Sharon should be able to coast to this win. Let's take you back in time to our first round of the season in the women's pro category on our Delta McKenzie Rewind. The women's pro shootdown started tight with only eight points separating Cara Kelly in first and Emily McCarthy in fifth. Always tough in the finals, Kelly shot 10, 10, 10, 10, 12 with her five arrows. Oh, Cara got it. 
and carried a six-point lead to the sixth and final arrow. Will land. Oh, she just missed it. She went for it. A five by Kaylee Pettifer and an eight by Sharon Wallace meant Kelly only needed a five to take the win. Right there, no problem. But of course, she hit a 10 to close out a solid shoot down round. Up and start counting points at the end because I was just so focused in trying to make good shots and trying to get a 12 on that last one to move a little bit and aimed really aggressive at it. And what a shoot down. I mean, it was, it was crazy. I think we all kind of struggled a little bit with numbers and yeah, but it was fun for sure. Well, that was a different scenario. We were inside and now we are outside in the elements and the sun is shining, but the wind is blowing. But that means that it's time to get our archers to the field of play. Here's PJ Riley. All right, here we go. Women's pro, our fifth place qualifier with a score of 389 from Wazika, Wisconsin, shooting for Matthews, Emily McCarthy. And our fourth place qualifier with a score of 396 from Lapeer, Michigan, shooting for Matthews, Cara Kelly. In third place with a score of 406 bonus rings from Dublin, Georgia, shooting for Matthews, Kaylee Pettifer. And our second place qualifier with a score of 409 bonus rings from Marsden, Saskatchewan, shooting for Hoyt, Aaron McLattery. And our number one qualifier with a score of 420 from Townville, South Carolina, shooting for PSE, Sharon Wallace. And when Sharon Wallace just got introduced, when PJ said shooting a score of 420, she just looked at him and just kind of gave a smile and a little bit of a laugh. Yeah, why not? I mean, I think Sharon understands what she accomplished today was just outstanding. I would feel pretty good if I was in her shoes right now with a 20-point lead. Okay. Five arrows to go. I understand that. Someone has to hit 514s sure. to tie her if she yeah. just shoots 10s. Okay. Ah. Let me, let me cast your mind back a little bit. We started the day with Senior Pro, then we went to Senior Known Pro, mm -hmm. then we began our coverage here on Sportsman's Channel with Women's Known Pro category and then the Known Pro. So far, of the four matches we've had, the shooter coming in in first place has won, with the exception of our last match. Kyle Douglas came from third, third place. Mm -hmm. And what we saw by Curtis Brodnax was he did everything that he should have done. Yeah. He can't control what Kyle did. So... With Sharon Wallace, it's 20 points. I understand that is a huge margin. Mm -hmm. but the question is, do you put it on cruise control these first couple, you know, and then see how the rest of the field plays out? Or is Aaron McGlattery and Kaylee Pettifer just kind of getting after each other and Cara Kelly just trying to see what she can do to get on the podium? I think they're all kind of, I think they're all going to kind of gauge themselves off their guesses because we are judging targets so they want to get calibrated to where they're at so i don't think they go guns a blazing they're going to try to shoot 12s here maybe they get a little more aggressive as we go but right now the race is for second and third who's going to get the second and third podium spot we have five targets on our field the one that wallace is on is the stan mule deer then we move over to the elevation javelina the shaboya impala the gold tip russian boar and the bodoodle grazing doe if you're if you've been watching our coverage since the beginning, we had that big break. That was because we reset the target distances because we're in the unknown category in mm -hmm. terms of judging distance. No range finders allowed. So if you were watching earlier and you knew the distances of those targets, those aren't them. So here we go, Darren. You got the scorecard, and we start off with Sharon Wallace with a 10. Yes. I thought she 12 that, to be honest, at the quick look. I didn't get a very long look at it there, but I thought she 12 it. Uh, I think she, was that the lower one? Mm-hmm. She called up her. Oh, gotcha. Mm -hmm. No wonder she didn't 12 it. Roger that. 10, 8 for Aaron. 
So then we go over to Kaylee Pettifer on the Shibuya Impala. She typically calls up her, and that's and in there. She got it, 4-12. And so the way this works is if we have a tie, let's say we have a tie for second place, it's got to be a tie on score and bonus rings shot. Then we would go to a closest to the center shoot-off, mm -hmm. which if you watched our first event in Foley, Alabama, and the way that was done, there's been an improvement in the procedure on how we determine closest to the center. Can't wait for them to roll that out. <laughs> if it happens. So for Kara. I missed Kara's score there. <clears throat> I don't know what she got. I'm going to try to catch it up here when they update the TV screen. Got everybody else's. Boy, the pollen here is just kicking in, by the way. It's been there nice. and uh, There was a 10 for Kara. She's mm -hmm. at 406. Big flip-flop between Aaron and Kaylee there. Kaylee shoots a 12, Aaron shoots an eight. Kaylee now enjoys a four-point lead over Aaron between second and third. So that's how important every arrow is. It can change very quickly. Good look there at Emily. I've always bragged about how strong her shot was. She aims a bow good and she shoots such a strong shot. Car right there, she's a beast at this game. Shoots so good, so consistent. A lot of wind right there, yep. Yeah. <clears throat> she says, abort that one, let's start over. Wow, huge gusts coming, mm -hmm. and the wind has, it looks like it shifted slightly too. <laughs> Feels like it's almost coming from now behind yeah. the archers where it's been going left to right for most of the day. You can see their hair whipping there and that, the trees blowing, it's, yeah, that's not easy to do. Paige Pierce working with McGlattery right, to hold that umbrella. Now more designed in this particular instance to try to shield them from the wind. Good look at Kara. She's so good at this game. You can see how the wind's bouncing off that front stabilizer and just moving that bow around. It's a very distinct look from the wind blowing your bow around versus like you not holding steady. Right, right, for sure. You can see the input is coming from the bar from the stabilizer out front as opposed to the bow arm or the hand. Pettifer, another strong shooter. Ooh, that's Sharon there, I believe. That looks like her fletching. Yeah, looks like Sharon's arrow in that Havelina. Eight for Emily. Eight for Emily, 405. Emily always with a smile on her face. Looks like <laughs> she's having a good time. That's an eight for Sharon. 438. She hasn't shot many of those this weekend. Definitely not. What a round today she shot. There's a good look at Aaron. From Canada. Glattery had a good day in the rain yesterday. Up for 12, I'm sure. Yeah, she got it. 420. Good rebound from the first arrow. Oh, they flip-flopped. Mm -hmm. Pettifer with an eight. Back to tied. Car Kelly as we move over to the Bow Doodle grazing doe. And for Cara Kelly, she called the upper 12. She got a 10. 416 for Miss Cara. Keep in mind here when we're looking at the women's pro and the open pro category, two jobs in one here in this particular game. First and foremost is going to be judging that distance, mm -hmm. and then the second is going to be obviously the shot execution. Yep. But you know what, Darren? We've been through it all before. You and I have both been setting the sight properly mm -hmm. <laughs> to your number is also very critical. Can be. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you miss set it by five yards, you'll be like, uh-oh, oh, what happened? Mm -hmm. You will not hit where you want to hit. Staying focused is important, especially when you have numbers like 45. I've seen people like, okay, you know, I'm going to set at 45 instead of 54. Yeah. You know, those types of things. So what is it, arrow number three? Arrow number three coming up. 
Wallace. There's now an 18 point lead. Mm -hmm. There's a good look at Kaylee. Her and Aaron just flip flop 12s and 8s, so they're still tied at 420. We have seen these ladies in so many shoot downs. Mm -hmm. Like the usual suspects. Havelina must be a dandy. Everyone's shooting it a little bit low right now. They just reset the field before we came back on air, so I'm assuming the Havelina is way out there. Yeah, the elevation Havelina is, I can confirm, the furthest target. There you go. Ooh, that's a good looking arrow. Although, judging from. Just a 10 for Kara. 426. This is the unknown category, so we are not telling gotcha. anybody what the distances are. But I would, but we know them. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty long course. Oh yeah. You think? Yeah, it's a, it's, it's longer than normal, I think. Mm -hmm. The maximum distance that ASA will set the targets, I think, within a yard is 50, 50 yards. So if you're if you're new to archery and you're wondering what that distance is and you want to come out and play, uh, 50 yards. There, there's known categories, unknown categories. You can have down to what. 40 yards or 35 yards? 40 yeah, I yards, think I think. 40. There's Known 40, maybe? Yeah, there's some Some of the novice classes are like a 30 yard max, I believe. Yeah, you're correct. They have pins, yeah, men's pins for at 30 yards. So, you know, even if you're new to archery, there's definitely a place for you to come out and play yep. here in the ASA. And there's youth categories as well. So, this is a family sport through and through. And no more evident was it than yesterday. If you went on the pro ranges where I was watching these shooters, suffer through some crazy rain everybody helping <laughs> each other in your group there are groups of four or five per target and umbrellas being held everywhere from rain and yep. people trying to help each other through the mud uh, yesterday was a day of survival you know you couldn't really get super aggressive your equipment wasn't working like it does on normal situations so you just try to minimize the damage survive the day dry everything off go out there today and do what sharon wallace did just smash it so smash. that's what your hope is okay so huge gust of wind now for a time i would say probably up until about five minutes ago we had an hour where we were had wind but not massive gusts like we have now mm -hmm. good look at sharon right there she's holding that bow so nice and steady Pulling on that thumb trigger till it fires. She got out right. That's got to be probably some wind there, I'd say. Mm -hmm. So Wallace was back to a 20 point lead, 450. Pettifer McGladdery at 430. Emily McCarthy. So for Kelly, Wallace, Pettifer, and McCarthy, they all made the pro pressure point shoot down at the first round. Mm, she went, <laughs> she's, Emily's not giving up. <clears throat> she's going 14 or nothing. <laughs> I like it. And with a smile on her face. Pettifer. Eight for Kaylee. 438 now for her. We've seen Pettifer really go on a scoring streak in shoot downs today she's battling it out for second place that was her car on that javelina mm -hmm. there's a good look at emily she shoots a strong shot she didn't like it <laughs> she says nope Eight there for Emily and now for Aaron. She can. No, that was for Sharon, sorry. Now we go to Aaron. We've got four eight so far in this round, so I think that's mostly wind. As our booth's getting ready to blow oh, away that's, here. That's a lot of wind. Upper called for Aaron McGladdery. Wow. She got it. That's going to move her Four, into 42. Yeah. Second place. Here we go. 
by four points, I believe. Yeah, four point jump with that all the eights that were shot there. So, and we're at arrow number five already, because <clears throat> it'll end right here. That's right. Nobody's within ten points of Sharon. So after this arrow, it will be over. Yep. Darren just mentioned it. That is the rule. If we're going to go to a sixth arrow, which is our last chance archery, last chance arrow. Anybody has to be within 10 points of our leader. And right now with a commanding lead, Sharon Wallace coming off that range, 20 points ahead of the rest of the field. Mm -hmm. She's had a couple of, you know, she had an eight on that one, but still with a great lead, 16 points over McLattery. Mm -hmm. Good look at Aaron there. If Aaron shoots a 10 here, she ensures second place. Kaylee can't catch her unless she shoots a 14. And if Sharon Wallace shoots a 10, no one can get within 10 points mm -hmm. of her. There are, are enough points available on the field. <laughs> Sharon Wallace, can she get it done again? Multi-time ASA shooter of the year, multi-time ASA classic champ, six-time Paris, Texas champion. I mean, Sharon Wallace, her resume is so deep. Mm -hmm. But this is a legendary performance that she was able to put on in the women's pro category today in the second round of qualification. And she shoots 10 and secures a victory just like that. That's the easiest shoot down she's ever been in in her life, I promise you. <laughs> the easiest. Cannot wait to have a conversation with her, but we still have podium places to be decided this win and for Sharon Wallace actually she got after it super quick and she actually got a run that last arrow was probably the least amount of gust we've seen in this minute that they have to shoot in this final arrow Lattery, number 10 mm -hmm. Cara fighting for a podium but well, she tried I think she was probably going down mm -hmm. to 14 I think she was trying to get up there in the top three. All right, first up, Aaron McGladdery. Well, you can see that wind just moving the torso yeah. around ever so slightly. So McGladdery with a 10 will lock up second place. Mm -hmm. 452, I believe, is what she'll end with. Yeah, so congratulations to Aaron McGladdery. I think she picked up Paige at the airport Monday. They've been here practicing all week. Paid off. Eight for Kaylee. 446, I believe. So that should be third place for Pettifer. I believe so. Eight for Cara. 442. Fourteen, Emily. Come on, girl. No. Nope. Just, Just a bit wide. outside. 426. She's going to finish in fifth. Car is going to finish in fourth. Kaylee's going to get third. Aaron's going to get second. And guess who's going to win? Well, they do it again from position number one. Sharon Wallace, who comes in with a 20-point advantage, able to hold off the competition, keep everyone at bay, and grab another victory. Sharon will also be the Black Eagle Dart and Pro-Am champ of this 2024 Delta McKenzie ASA Pro-Am Tour. And what a day it's turned out to be here at Uchi <laughs> Creek. Sharon Wallace getting congratulations from her husband, Jack, and she's going to make her way over to the headset. And boy, I really got to dig deep for a question here, don't you think? I got two questions for her. Why don't you lead off? <clears throat> How about that? I can do that. Can you hear us, Sharon Wallace? Okay. Do you have us? Can you hear us? Nope. 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 <laughs> no, I nope. can't hear you. I hear the end. I can't hear. Nothing? How about now? Okay. You got me? Yeah. Gotcha. I have two questions. Greg, Greg told me to take the lead. How in the world did you shoot 18 up today? And was that the least stressful shoot off you've ever been in? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I just, uh, I don't know. I went out there today and I just had no nerves and I just felt really calm. And uh, within the first three targets, uh, I hit three twelves out of four and I hit a lot of uppers. I played a lot of uppers this weekend. I ended up not going to indoor nationals and just really focused on um, 
shooting for this tournament, and it paid off. Great round today. Great round today. Thank you so much. Yeah, what a round. Congratulations. Uh, where does this one rank in your wins, come, especially coming after that outstanding performance in day two? I th it's either the second best I've shot or the third, because I think Fort Benning and Louisiana, I shot really, really good when I started shooting uppers, but I do think 18 up is my best one round, so <laughs> I'm pretty happy about it. Well, outstanding shooting. Congratulations on the victory. Sharon Wallace, your champion Thank you. here Thank you. in Russell County, Alabama. Yeah. All right, we got one more round to go. Open Pro, and you cannot wait to see the scores coming into this one. We got more ASA archery coming at you after the break. four pounds, eight feet per second faster. Our goal wasn't just light and fast. It was how light and how fast. Hey, Tony, we just got a new site in. We need a product video on it ASAP. I got an appointment. I'm not going to be able to do it. You're going to have to do it. I have 50 other things to do today, and I have to do your job, too. This is a site. You put it on a bow. It has three pins for aiming. Is that good enough? Shop Lancaster Archery Supply for all your archery needs. We've got the gear. We've got the knowledge. We've got the passion. Paige Pierce, your women's Open Pro champion. Open Pro champ, Bodie Turner. And our champion, Casey Koffel, LAS Classic champ, Brady Ellison. Jolti Benham takes the win. Nick Cappers, Classic Open Pro champ. The X-10 is the most successful arrow in competitive archery history, accounting for far more medals than any other individual piece of sporting equipment in Olympic history. Easton introduces the latest innovation to the X-10 lineup, the 4mm Parallel Pro. Parallel Pro offers legendary X-10 precision for all forms of archery. Elevate your precision. Your journey to the podium begins with Easton X-10. I have to shoot the best or there's just no point in doing it. I'm blown away at just how easy each arrow tunes right out of the box. Ultra Arrows, the pinnacle of precision and performance. Sub four pounds, eight feet per second faster. Our goal wasn't just light and fast. It was how light and how fast. Yeah, buddy. Sub four pounds, eight feet per second faster. Our goal wasn't just light and fast. It was how light and how fast. Hey, Tony, we just got a new site in. We need a product video on it ASAP. I got an appointment. I'm not going to be able to do it. You're going to have to do it. I have 
50 other things to do today, and I have to do your job too. This is a sight. You put it on a bow. It has three pins for aiming. Is that good enough? Shop Lancaster Archery Supply for all your archery needs. We've got the gear, we've got the knowledge, we've got the passion. Paige Pierce. So with the rain coming in today, you know, it's really dark in here. I think that can make judging easier with the cloud cover. Um, just the light, you know, lighting is very consistent, but it's awful dark. So the aiming can be a problem with that. That was yesterday, but now we're under sun, pretty much sunshine, but Open Pro, our last category of this tournament. I'm Greg White with Darren Christianberry, and we had a tie up top, don't we, Darren? We do, Jacob Marlowe at 420, so he's obviously in the lead with bonus rings, but the guy you don't want behind you chasing you, Mr. Dan McCarthy, tied with him at 420. Chance Bobeff, a past winner here at 418, Benny Barger at 416, and Sam Souter is in fifth with a 414. Yeah, sorry about that, Jack Wallace. It's actually Sam Suter. But let's take a look at how the first round of the 2024 Delta McKenzie ASA Pro-Am Tour happened. Here is the rewind. Shooting in his first ever finals in just his second year as an open pro competitor, Brady yeah, Myers looked as cool nervous, as could be. He called upper and he got the upper. How so. about that? He shot three 12s and two 10s to Levi's one 12 and four 10s to take a three point lead into the sixth area. It's all really on the shoulders of Brady Myers assessing the situation. In a nearly identical replay of Foley 2023. Levi has to go for the 14. That's it, that's his only option at this point. Yeah, he's three points back. Does it oh, again. come on. Does it again? Come on. Again. <laughs> no. Levi crushed a 14 with his final arrow oh, to put on. all the pressure on the leader. Come In on. the back pocket for Brady Myers, this is the time to wow. get it. But where Dan McCarthy missed the shot he needed to take the win last year. He pull off the miracle arrow. Got he got it. it. Oh, he got it. Brady Myers didn't. He center punched the upper 12, and the second year pro took a one point victory over the 13 time open pro shooter of the year. I figured he'd probably hit the 14, so I had my number, which I thought it was exactly. And then I had another number for if I just had to shoot a 10. Really focused on the number, because I didn't real, I didn't want to focus on making the shot, because then I'd just okay. get nervous, and then I'd tense up. So I just kept my mind on other things, and I put the right number on and focused where I need to aim because it was a black target. It wasn't yeah. it wasn't the easiest to hold on. Ah, that was so exciting. And now with our top five in our open pro category, only six points separating them, it's time to welcome our archers to the field of play. Here's PJ Riley. Oh, and it looks like we might have a little bit of a technical error. There, there we, we go. go. All right. Take it away, PJ. Now we've got our final division of the night, Open Pro. Our fifth place qualifier with a 414 from Trenton, Kentucky, shooting for Matthews, Sam Souter. And our fourth place qualifier with a score of 416 from Scottsboro, Indiana, shooting for PSE, Benny Barger. Our third place qualifier 
with a score of 418 from Mount Juliet, Tennessee, shooting for Darton, Chance Boba. And our second place qualifier with a score of 420 and 14 bonus rings from Wazika, Wisconsin, shooting for Matthews, Dan McCarthy. And our first place qualifier with a score of 420 and 17 bonus rings from Chipley, Florida, shooting for elite Jacob Marlowe. All right, five targets on this field of play. Darren Christianberry, our target number one is a Stan Mule Deer, and then we have an Elevation Javelina. Shibuya Impala, the gold tip Russian boar, and the Bo Doodle grazing doe. And they have set this course relatively long as we had a reset of targets before our women's pro category. Yeah, the typical average, <clears throat> you know, I don't know what the average is on the distance, but there's usually a target in the 20s. Um, maybe a coyote at like 28 or something, but we don't have any of that, it doesn't look like today. So a longer average, a little bit of wind, it's a trickier shoot off. These guys are judging. There's six points from first to fifth. It's really a, a, a race to be had yet. We'll see who's gonna win this thing. Jacob Marlowe, of course, has been on top in different disciplines of archery in his career, 11 year pro. And the clock has already started and we're getting after it straight away. So to the stand mule deer, which most of the day has been shooting right for a lot of people. And of course, didn't they move that around? Good center 10 there for Jacob. Maybe he'll get calibrated and say, okay, my numbers are good. Dan shoots a 10 to match it, so they're gonna stay tied. <coughs> There's a good look at Jacob. Jacob's got a little bit of a unique anchor, but man, is he consistent. He's a great indoor shooter. It's not his favorite, but he shoots it well. Yeah, he certainly does. 10 for Jacob. Takes him to a 430. Let me go over to Danny McCarthy, the Elevation Havelina, 21-year pro. Of course, for Dan, shooter of the year in 2005, in 19, 21, 2022, 2023, 2023 ASA Classic champion. I mean, multiple champions, national wins. He ran out of room, didn't he? He on certainly <laughs> did. <laughs> and we're going to go to the Shibuya Impala, and this is Chance Bobeth. It's 8 to 426 for Chance now. Won Georgia and Louisiana last year. He was the known pro shooter of the year. He went to known pro, then back here to the open pro category. The difference, of course, is the ability to use a range finder versus mm -hmm. you how to judge distance in this one. Benny Barger, around 10 years as a pro. And Barger was on the gold tip Russian boar, and this is Going to be Sam Suter, two years pro for Suter out of Kentucky. Coming out of the gate with a 12 on the Bow Doodle Grazing Doe. Moved himself right into third place right there, tied for third. First time watching ASA competition. These archers are going to rotate. So from the Bow Doodle Grazing Doe, our fifth place qualifier will now move to our first target to the Stan Mule Deer, and that is Sam Suter. <laughs> Look at those bunched up scores 430, 430. 426, 426, 426. This is going to be a good race. 2022 Semi Pro Shooter of the Year, 2023 Open Pro Rookie of the Year is Sam Suter. Another Indiana boy right there. Yeah, there you go. Okay, he's ready. He's Somebody said Benny shot like 16 up today, so he shot a 216 score today, he which did. is a massive one-day yeah. score. Uh, don't quote me on this, but basically what happens after your first day of qualifications, they group everyone together. So the top four are going to shoot at a stake. Mm -hmm. Benny, I believe, was either in the fourth or fifth group after yesterday. Wow. And so he actually got to this uh, this shoot down as a surprise to some of the other shooters in the top group and the, t and the second group. Came from way back to make top five. Good for him. This archer right here enjoys hunting, watching his boys at home. That's close. Play those sports and enjoys date night with the wife. All right, first 
Looks like a good 10. But we're going to move to Suter mm -hmm. on our stand mule deer. 436 for Sam now with that 10. Then we'll go to Jacob Marlowe. I see, ooh, Nathan's in tight with that umbrella. Trying to keep that wind off his bow. Ten for Jacob. That'll work. Yeah, Ten points for Jacob. Doesn't doesn't it feel like though with Dan McCarthy that you're gonna really have to start even with these three arrows left, get some yeah. bonus rings. Like you gotta get at least bank a bonus ring. Dan has a 10 yeah, because he's he's clutch. I've said a lot of times Dan hits him when he has to. He's been clutch more often than not. So you want to try to distance yourself before you run out of targets, and it goes fast. The advantage, though, for Jacob Marlowe was three bonus rings coming into this. Mm -hmm. For Chance Bobeth. It's going to be a 10. That's always handy to have in your pocket in case there's a tie, mm -hmm. which we forgot about earlier. I forgot about the rule change. But, yeah, the ties will be broken by bonus rings. I, I ooh, that looks like it's going to be if, if upper was called. I believe he's going to snag that one. Yeah, he did call an upper. That wind's getting a little chilly. It is. <laughs> That's close. That is really close. Got mag <laughs> he's got some big magnifiers. <laughs> Those, yeah, it definitely gives him fishbowl looking eyes. Oh, uh, yeah. wow. Just off of it. That was, yeah, that was close. Benny, 10, 436. Nothing changed that round. Whole bunch of 10s for everybody. All right, so Chance Bobef then moves to our Bow Doodle. Raising Doe in the fifth position. That means that Benny Barger is going to move to the stand mule deer on number one. Dan McCarthy is on our gold tip Russian boar. There's Chance. He's going to have a look at it. The lighting's starting to change too. The lights shifted where the archers are in the are in the shade, and it's really difficult for us to see in our position if any of the targets are lit. It looks like from a different position that it could be. The shadows are getting long. Mm -hmm. Good look at Chance. One of the best shooters that's ever walked the planet right there. And this, this hold is typical for Chance. He Ooh. went for the 14. I think he might have got, got it. it. <laughs> okay. All right. Hello, He's like, and I can hear him, pee pie. <laughs> look, if Chance gets that, if he gets that 14, Danny McCarthy and Jacob Marlowe, if they come up with tens apiece, we're going to have a three-way tie mm -hmm. for first in terms of points. Dan settling back in. He holds so steady. That bow's not even moving. All right, so ten for him. Okay, first now we'll see what happens with Marlo. So for Benny Barger mm -hmm. on the stand mule deer. Good execution and a 12 for him. Wow. Good That's bonus. big. Run. Mm -hmm. 448. This is getting interesting. So, Barger, we're going to go to Sam Suter. Ooh. And for Suter on the Elevation Havelina, unfortunately, five. a five. Yeah, that's going to hurt. 441 now for Sam. So, now we're going to move to Jacob Marlowe. Who is our number one seed coming into these pro pressure points? You down. Ten. 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 Jacob, 450 now for him. Okay, so this is going to play out the way I think it's going to play out. Mm -hmm. And it's definitely a 10 for Dan McCarthy. So the question is, what a chance Bobef end up shooting? If he got that 14, now we got to look at bonus rings because I know coming into this, Dan McCarthy and Chance Bobef were tied at 14 bonus rings apiece. Yes. So Chance will take the advantage there. Gosh, it's Ooh, close. It might be high. Might be. No, oh, he got no, it. He he's got it. it. Okay. Wow. Aggressive move. 450. 450. 450. Three 450s. Three 450s, a 448, and a 441 now. Okay. 
So has McCarthy shot a bonus, or has it been all 10s? No, tens? all 10s so far. All right, so Chance Bobeff actually moves into second place mm -hmm. on 15 bonus rings. Yep. Jacob Jacob's got 17 bonus rings. And Dan McCarthy's in third with 14 bonus rings. And bonus rings we're talking about are those 12. So the bonus rings that you shoot out on the range, 10 is, think of it as par, the big yep. ring uh, in the middle, 10 ring. And then that 12's in play. In qualification, whether you're shooting lower or upper, you gotta call the uppers, mm -hmm. doesn't matter. So a thing I like about it is, is that the work that you've done in qualification carries over into this finals. The difference in positions right now is Jacob's contemplating on how aggressive do I go. Chances on the windiest target of the field of the day, the mule deer, and then he finishes on the longest target, which is the javelina. So Jacob. Center 10. Mm -hmm. He called upper, so he's just under the upper. There's a good look at Dan holding that bow so steady. This feels like a bonus ring to me. 12. Yeah. But Dan, uh, yeah, he, he didn't call up or? Mm -mm, he got it. See what Chance does. Holding a long time. All right, Chance Bobeth currently tied for first at 12 points. Okay. 12 Did not chance. call up or? Didn't call up or? 462. Okay, so that's going to move Chance Bobeth to the lead. Yep. Dan's going to time when we get to Dan. Yeah, but Chance is going to have an extra bonus yep, ring. Yep. Ties are broken on bonus rings. Benny, 458 with that 10. <coughs> Sam said, let's just get after it. 446 now with that 5. Nothing he can do but just try. Get that experience, now, bank it, remember next time. It's a good look at Jacob. Boy, and just that, that inch or so, dropping below that yeah. bonus ring. Just low. It could cost him this tournament. Are we going into our fifth arrow after this? Yeah, this is number four. Ten for Jacob, puts him at 460. We're going to see at least six, mm -hmm. but number five is coming up. I don't know. You mentioned it. Danny McCarthy shows up when he needs to. Yep. And it just, to me, it just felt like it was going to be he a bonus. He hits him when he has to. Yeah. More often than not. <clears throat> I said it before, and he's come up short, but man, he hits him more often than not. And that's clutch. So for Chance Bobeff, he's going to go 462. Dan McCarthy at 462, but Bobeff has got one extra bonus ring. So it's actually going to put Chance Bobeff now the leader of this open pro to our final arrow of regulation. Anybody within 10 points of our leader, or leaders in this case, is going to shoot a last chance archery, last chance arrow, number six. Yeah. Jacob. And there by the way, yeah, right that's, that's from earlier. <laughs> oh, no, that's from yeah, <laughs> there it is. That's exactly the we'll magnification that you need now. when calling these lines. There's a lot of money on the line. I'm anxious to see what Jacob does here. Dan's on the target he can 12. Chance is on the hardest target. Jacob's on the target at Chance 14. Oh, oh so close. And he called right. upper. There's a good look at Benny. Nice strong shot. Good 10. Dan can definitely 12 this target. Just above it for a 10. Sam Suter. Sam's goes still the going for them. <laughs> I love it. Just missed it high. Yep. Now we've got a chance, Bo Beth. Okay, so that was Dan McCarthy. For a 10, 472. Yep. That was the stand mule deer. Now we're going to go to chance. Bo Beth on the oh. Avalina, <laughs> and he called upper. Oh, he did call yeah, he upper. he did call upper, so that's a 10. I was like, Yeah, that heart attack that you just had. I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> Smashed it, but just a 10. And if you're wondering how we know, there is a cone that, that each archer has that they can place in front of their shooting box, and that will indicate upper. Mm -hmm. If it's behind, that means lower, and I, that's why I looked at the – shooters and I saw that cone in front they're not supposed to move that cone until after their next arrow 10 for Benny 468 
Boy, this is really going to be interesting. Eight points for Sam, 454. <laughs> and Jacob needs, he needs to catch that 12 to be tied with Chance and Dan and going in the final arrow. Our initial look at it, it didn't look like it, but. Mm -mm. I thought he was just short. But if he does catch it, he'll get to go last. <sighs> no, just short. Mm -hmm. 470. Well, he's going to be thinking about those yep. millimeter low ones. <laughs> he shot good. He didn't miss him by far. Okay, so where are we at? 72 is a piece for yep. Danny and Chance Bovef. Chance Bovef is actually in first place because he has one more bonus ring by our calculations than Danny McCarthy. I think they're tied because Dan hit one I didn't count for. Uh, did he hit one earlier? So they're at 16 bonus rings apiece. Chance shot an 8, then Chance shot a 10, then he shot a 14, and then a 12. So Chance should be up by 1. That's that's what I have, too. Yeah, yeah, you're right. 15 for Dan, 16 for Chance. A lot of math going on over a here. A lot of math. <laughs> a lot of manual math. Mm-hmm. All right, oh, so they're bringing it out. They are bringing it out. So they're bringing out the hyena. As crazy as this wind day has been, at this moment, it is kind of calm. There's just there's a little bit of a breeze. Now, this is where I would say, okay. Four tens and a 12. Chance had two tens and eight, a 12 and a 14. For the five here, you sweep the field with all five scoring rings. So, last chance archery, last chance arrow. Four ten and a 12. We have four shooters. Yes. Sam Suter comes off the field with a big round of applause. Great to see the two-year pro in the shoot-down pro Good. pressure point. Good. This is where Scott's got to put some distance on this target. Make this a make-or-break target. Okay, so the hyena put it down there. He's not moving him too far in front of their normal shooting boxes. Yeah. Probably, what, two yards? Yeah. Two, three yards. But they're shooting two and a half lanes over, so mm -hmm. they did add some distance right, there. The yeah, so kind of the right part of your screen, you can see where our, our official is standing behind that hyena. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, these guys are so close, and they all judge really well, obviously, that with the field bunched up like they are, 72, 72, 70, 68, I think, I think you've got to set this target out there where a great shot will be rewarded. You know, if you set it in there, close and everybody 14s it nothing can change you know which obviously the winners tickled to death with that but mm -hmm. as close as this is i like to see i personally like to see a little longer target just because a great shot will be rewarded here and what's our order of shooting it's going to be i believe benny barger is going to be first Jacob Marlowe is going to be second. Dan McCarthy will be third because of bonus rings, and Chance will get to decide if he wins or how he plays his last arrow. Good look there. Easy target to aim at with all those black dots. They'll have no trouble seeing where they want to hit. They just have to figure out how far away it is. All right, first up, Benny. All right, so judging is over. So Benny Barger going to go first. If the other archers have shot with Benny before mm -hmm. and he hits a good one, will it give the other three more confidence in their mark because they know that he's a good judger? You, you know what I'm saying? Like, like does his performance, is it going to impact the other three? No. I mean, if he hits it, it could make him go, oh, crap, I have to hit a ring now to, mm -hmm. you know, I can't make a mistake here. I don't know that it would build confidence in what they've done by judging their number. Let's see what he does. Oh, just right at it. it. Good shot. He got the number really close. If he'd have just been lefty to hit it. Yep. I think that score makes him do the math. Okay, what do I need to do now? So it should be an 8, right, for 70, 76? Mm -hmm. yeah. Now Jacob Marlowe, who was our leader on bonus rings, coming in now trails by two points. So he's at 70. He needs a 14 to really make these guys work. And what does he need just to guarantee he's on the podium? He needs an 8 to okay. get third place. All right. 
So he can't have the disaster of a five mm -hmm. that would take him off the box. No, but if he 14s it, he forces Dan and Chance. They have to hit a ring. They have to hit a 12 to tie or beat him on bonus ring, but they have to hit a ring. So if you're Jacob Marlowe, do you say, this is my number, I'm going to take half a half a yard off? Yeah. So if I miss, I miss, I low, miss low and stay yeah. on the box? Yeah, okay. or, or aim right at the top of it, maybe a yard light and catch the bottom of it here. He's more than capable of making the shot. He shot right in between the upper and the 14. <laughs> Low right, so eight. So he wraps up third place. Okay, so he's he's definitely on the podium. 478. And he's ahead of the other two. So you yeah. know, if, if the scenario is if Danny McCarthy or Chance Boga missed the target altogether, Jacob Marlowe's going to be champ. Yeah. I Chance is that happening? I w yeah, it's not. So that that's <laughs> probably not going to happen. No. I, and Dan's looking now. He's like, okay, if I 12 it, Chance wins with a 12. If I 14 it, Chance wins with a 14. Oof. If he slips up and shoots a 10, then Chance all all he has to do is shoot center 10 to win because he's got him on bonus ring. So this is a big arrow for for Dan, and it decides Chance's fate. And he's got a lot of experience himself. Plus he's got Brandon Reyes there with him as well, who's yep. got tons of experience in this game. So let's see. More often than not, I'll go on record saying it again, more often than not, Danny McCarthy hits him when he has to. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see what the multi-time champ has got in store for us. Chance has to do now shoot a 10 to win, I believe. That's it. Yep. So Dan overjudged it a couple yards there. He didn't put out the cone, so I think he was shooting at the lower. I believe center 10 to win. All right, for Chance Bobeth. You'll see a traditional long hold for chance. One thing he switched to in the past couple of years that he's never, I've never seen him shoot tournaments. He's shooting a thumb trigger. He's always shot a four finger hinge forever. And he put it right where he needed yep. to put it. And That'll that do it. Is going to get him a win tied on score with Dan McCarthy, but he'll win on a yep. single bonus ring. Wow. Coming down to the final for the open pro category and chance Bobeth back on top again. And he does it in fine style. How do you like that close competition in the that's, open pro category? That's, a, that's awesome. Like you said, it could have it could have went any direction there. It was really close going in. It was close all the way through, and it was just a matter of who hit it, who didn't. Chance came out on top. To get four shooters into that last chance archery, last chance arrow, it shows you the competitive nature off of a weekend that was crazy with rain the first day and people standing up to their calves in water and shooting <laughs> targets that were sitting in water as well to now the flip-flop of this day. It has dried out, and it was a beautiful day. And then you add wind to the equation. But standing on top, he came in two points back in third place, but with 14 bonus rings, able to capitalize on it. And no, Chance sir. Bobef, what a big win for you. Congratulations. How are you feeling right now? Pretty stinking good, man. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's uh, had a really good weekend. Everything just kind of came together, got some lucky breaks, and was able to endure the weather. It's uh, kind of surreal at the moment. The uh, arrow that won that tournament for you right there, Chance, was that 14 on that feeding deer. What, uh, made, what made you decide to put your tournament on the line right there? Well, I didn't, uh, I didn't think there was going to be any better time than that one. I mean, that was uh, the closest target we had. And I felt like if I was going to make a move, that was the best time. And luckily, it worked out. It was a fantastic shot, fantastic weekend. You survived all the crappy weather and came out on top. Congratulations, buddy. Thank you so much, man. I, I really appreciate it. Yep. Big win for Chance Bobef coming in, and he does it on a single bonus ring. Well, how do you like that archery here? <laughs> At Uchi Creek, the Pro Pressure Point shoot down. The 2024 Delta McKenzie ASA Pro-Am Tour hasn't disappointed at all this year. We've seen outstanding archery across the board, especially here in round two of the Black Eagle Darton Pro-Am. 
Darren Christian Barry, your final thoughts for the weekend. Fantastic weekend, as always. Enjoyed sitting here in the booth with you. I love watching great archery. I can't wait to see it again. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. We can't wait to see you again. Camp Minden, Louisiana, April 25th through the 28th. It's going to be the Easton and Hoyt Pro-Am. Make sure you join us then. For Darren, for PJ, and the rest of the crew, thanks for joining us. We'll see you soon. Tony, we just got a new site in. We need a product video on it ASAP. I got an appointment. I'm not going to be able to do it. You're going to have to do it. I have 50 other things to do today, and I have to do your job too. This is a sight. You put it on a bow. It has three pins for aiming. Is that good enough? Shop Lancaster Archery Supply for all your archery needs. We've got the gear. We've got the knowledge. We've got the passion. Ryan Jeffries. Mr. Ryan Reed.